All right, and welcome to another Heavy Gear Blitz Battle Report. I'm Dave with What Game Now, and this is Nick with What Game Now. Say hello, Nick. How's it going? We have this game, and we're going to do something a little different this time. This game was a 300 threat value as opposed to the 150 we did before. It is Caprice and New Cole again, but uh, we had to move to the 6x4. And it's kind of exciting because it was like our first time back in a gaming store, really, since yeah, all this really. stuff happened. Um, so that was kind of neat. I, and so uh, I built a few of the models that I needed to build. Uh, and Nick had some hit the crease models I used last time so we could build that 300 point, uh, th 300 threat value uh, armies. Now I'd like to say, preface this by saying that I am still... A new player. I built this list. This is the first one that I built by myself without any of Nick's help. Good job. <laughs> so, well, you know, you get to see how that goes. Um, but uh, we want to talk first. They were kind of like setting up and talking through the game and so on and so forth. Um, I wanted to take this time to talk a little bit about um, the armies that we put together, but also. Um, how, what you feel the difference is between like a, a 150 points on a 4x4 like we did before and a 6x4, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so you mind if I go ahead and start with that? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, the reason we're doing 300 points 6x4 with the terrain setup is um, we got some comments on our last videos. People wanted to see uh, more variety of unit types. Um, in particular, tanks is the big thing we haven't touched yet. And tanks and heavy gear are very expensive. They run 20 to 30 points, up to almost 40 in some cases. So at 150 threat value, getting multiple tanks on the table is kind of hard, which is why I went with the next size up. Um, that required moving to a 6x4, and also you'll notice we have a heck of a lot more large line of sight blocking terrain on the table. Yeah, that was a... And I want to point out, okay, these, these tanks that uh, you built... Tanks, not as in the rolling tanks, but these, uh, what are they ever do? Uh, they're, so they're meant to be oil refineries. Right, like oil refineries. I, I haven't finished painting them yet, but... Well, they're, they're, I saw them and I was like, dude, I love those. Those are that, soup cans and some pipe fittings. Yep, yeah, soup cans and pipe fittings. It just goes to show that you don't need a bunch of fancy stuff to make some pretty cool terrain. And I'm sure once you get some painted uh, and based, that they'll look even better. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. So, and also I like to point out the one that's next to me. I'm on the right... They, I'm on the right there. Uh, the pipes that are like connected together, those are like receipt paper rolls, mm -hmm. which I thought was really cool. So we want, I want to do some of that later on too, where we actually show yeah, some of Yeah, and you can see down here, there, there's a large brown building or tannish building in the top right, and then there's a gray one and a gray one in the middle. That's all scratch built. Um, there's a lot of scratch built terrain on this table, and then a giant 40k bash. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that too. <laughs> hey, it was, um, it was big and it fit. But as far as the armies we have, um, we were working with like a, a couple of starter boxes worth on my side, and you have a few more specific models for New Cold than I do for. And, I need to do a collection video just to show yeah. you what I've got to play. So with. he's got a ton of it, and it's one of the reasons why I got into it too. Because looking at that collection, I was like, "This is a bunch of cool models here." Um, I'll go ahead and go with mine. Uh, I like that. that Megadoose probably one of my favorites, but I love the Amons as well. They're just big baddies. So uh, I have two units there that have the uh, the Acos, five Acos, and Amons. I have one that has like four Kadeshes and and a Megadoo, um, and then I have a Recon, and at the very top there that is uh, two Bashans two Aphek Mortars and, and, and an Amon. Uh, I went with like that whole, like, let's just rain down fire kind of thing. And it, it, it worked fairly well, spoiler yeah. alert. <laughs> it worked um, all right. Um, it was fun, and, and I made some mistakes, which you'll see. But, um, yeah, just, just kind of like a few guys to get up and do a little bit of down and dirty. Yeah. And then um, another thing I want to comment, too, like this, this army... Uh, one of the things that happens later on, uh, not spoilers or anything, uh, but there's a, you know, you, when you play Caprice, you got to think that most all of the, except for the ACOs, but most all of the decent size mounts uh, have Brawler Plus. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that does come up. That's the thing we can mention right now with Caprice. Um, Caprice's big shtick is they're very efficient. So most Caprice models have one to two actions, but they all have React Plus. Yeah. So it gives them a free reaction every turn. Um, we are playing with the updated Caprice profiles from June 1. We actually got them a couple days early. 
um, yeah. because we asked nicely. And so it is worth noting that these, um, like the Kadeshes, for example, have an ECM now. Yeah. So the Kadesh has a rotary cannon or a, or a particle accelerator and then an ECM. So what you'll see happening later on is eventually they gets the idea of, hey, what if they just react with the ECM and just fry something or spit out this defense yeah. bubble? It can, and um, all the mons have stable. So they're really efficient on their orders, they're really efficient on their and actions. That's a big change that we mentioned before in, in, uh, in another video. Or well, we, didn't, we didn't mention it, but it, it did come up in our last video. Um, that was before this change, Caprice had low profile. Yeah. Where they were very resilient. There were Amons that were like not getting hit. They were just doing this like matrix dance around shots. Right, right. So, um, but st the, adding stable to basically the whole faction is, is important. Like, it's... Yeah. It makes them very mobile, mm -hmm. and I should have used that mobility a little bit more. But we'll get we'll get into that. Yeah, and then that's a good point. Like they have brawler on a lot of their big stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I was avoiding hand to hand combat. <laughs> um, that that was not good for me. There's actually one moment in here where I halfway consider it, and it's like, oh no, even the recon guy is just like, right. no, this is a bad idea. Yeah, most definitely. Um, we just put out our our markers that we forgot all about marking yeah, our so, actions. So, so stuff is starting to move now. But go ahead and. Um, uh, so I'm just going to start with my recon squad and and uh, and move up, try to get some tar target designation, um, so that my Amons can do work. Um, for those who don't know, once you've um, forward observed the model, then you can react. Um, with you all. basically call artillery on. Yeah, on you can the react spot. with all your artillery, and that once again, react plus Means on the free models, it's a free reaction. So. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to see it do something in a moment. <laughs> um, we're waiting on that, though. We can go through my army here. Yeah, um, I'm playing New Coalition. I am playing a sublist called the New Coalition Self-Defense Force. Um, sublists are kind of... They're, they're themed armies you can play that give you a few bonuses. Yeah. Um, it's important to note that the bonuses are never free. They always come at a cost, but they're just access. But they also give some variety. Like, if I wanted my Caprice has some sublists that allow me to splash in some Utopia um, and some, some other factions. Yeah. So that you can actually have... Uh, yeah, allies and things like that. Have some variety. Um, and that's one of the cool things about New Cole is they actually have a very small model list, but they have one of the more one of the most prolific access to allies in the entire game. Yeah. Um, anyway, starting at the bottom, you will notice a, um, gr a group by some Tiki heads on the bottom left... That is two Fusilier um, Anvil hover tanks and three Jerboa sentries. Um, the way they are is they're set up. They use the Pathfinder's deployment because they're all re um, because there's a recon unit in there, so they're all placed further outside my deployment zone, basically set up offensively. Right. Their job was to go out and be annoying as a more aggressive unit. Yeah. Um, the Jerboas are going to target designate for the tanks who have anti-tank missiles. Uh, we did take the time just so you know that we set up um, our objectives and things before we started recording on this one because it was going to be a long game, seeing as it's three threat value. Mm -hmm. uh, there were going to be some long term, which is still only took only about two and a half hours. I think. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all, especially yeah. when he, never mind. We'll talk about that later. Well, in game speed up as time goes on and stuff dies. He he heavy gear is, is a very front loaded game on the damage. The first turn and a half. Can take more than the rest of the game combined sometimes. Yeah. Well, we wanted to, we want to also, too, in this, the reason, one reason why we're doing the commentary now is because we wanted to um, concentrate less on telling everybody what we're doing and actually just play the game. Yeah. You know, because. Yeah, and then that helped with the speed up, too. Yeah. Um, so, but go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just basically trying to get, um, so that recon unit, everything in it, basically, including Amon's ridiculously have a target, target designator. Uh, as a as a stat as a trait, so um, just trying to get some line of sight on some dudes and uh, do and, and get within optimal range, get within range, uh, sensor range, so that I can actually yeah nail down someone. Yeah. So w w what's about to happen here is the uh, the guy who just moved on the top by that gray building just is going to do a um, forward observation attempt on my guy in the far top left. And I just spend my command. I think he's going to have to spend a. Um, so this is where the orders come in. He spent the try it again order to reroll. It goes off, um, and he's going to unload a bunch of anti tank missiles on the Chevalier. Now um, it is worth noting that all reactions are declared at once. So once you declare it, even if like the model dies before you finish resolving it, it's yeah. still gone. Um, 
One thing we did um, misplay a little bit here, and I need to, I still need to double check, and I'm fairly sure we misplayed it. Um, the jamming doesn't require a quote what's called a sensor lock, okay. so you can jam re um, regardless of what's in the way. Right. Well, that um, kind of makes sense. If it's whatever's happening is yeah. in the air, then you should be able to jam it as the signal or the or the yeah, whatever gets well, close. One of my complaints with heavy gears, they they have sensor lock and they have sensor range. And they have very similar requirements, but do different things. Yeah. And sometimes it's it's easy to confuse that. Anyway, the, the Chevalier in the top left, who's a heavy, which is a fire sport gear with a howitzer on the back, is about to die horribly. <laughs> um, anyway, going through the rest of my army. Um, so that was a strike group. I had a fire sport group with a Hussar Lance, which has five rotary cannons, four of them linked in one array and then one big one, and a Voltiger command variant tank. Um, I had a strike group, which was an Arblastrier and two Chevaliers. Um, basically, the, the Hussar group was the hammer. They're, they're designed to go kill stuff. The Chevalier group was more of an objective camper. Um, all of it was pretty independent, didn't need to be around each other, so their job was just to sit back and bomb things. Um, there's a general purpose group of five Chasseurs lying around, um, hiding behind a wall in about the center left of the battlefield. Um, there is a recon group, which includes a fully upgraded um, task force commander, which is going to give me a bonus on my initiative rolls, and he's got two orders he can hand. That's actually three. That's something I forgot. They they upped him to three orders instead of two. <laughs> right. And he's just going to be back there in this little jerboa, just like, no, 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 do better, guys. Do better, guys. <laughs> well, that, that little command group that you had, that was at the... The well, a little. I say little because there's only two models in it. The Hussar is it the Hussar the tank? The, so the Hussar is the giant walker, and then there's a Voltiger, which is the the tracked the, tank. Right, and then they themselves sense the Voltiger has three actions. When you half that to get your secondary part of the unit, or your secondary part of the unit, you get the Hussar. Which well, no, it was all one group. That was all one unit. So, because the unit can be between four and six. Oh, okay. so that was that was one squad. It wasn't half down. I thought I thought we were talking about that. Okay, so no, no, it no. was five total. It so was five total actions in one fire support group. Yeah. In two models. And it was rough. Uh, yeah. It, it it's gonna there's the painful dice rolls. Yeah. Um, this is where that little Drabo is like, guys, guys, you gotta do better. Um, I did forget to mention. Um, I did upgrade both the fusilier hover tanks to veterans, so they do have a free passive mm -hmm. reroll. Um, they will be abusing the heck out of that this entire game. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so... At least my game plan with this was the uh, Fusilier group was supposed to be kind of a distraction. They're going to do decent damage. They have good target um, forward observation electronic warfare, and they can be really hard to deal with. Um, Is this the Death Nail? Uh, some thing. I think one of the Kadeshes is firing at him as well. Or not Kadesh, is the mortars. No, we tied. Uh, yeah, I think this I think this is the anti-tank missiles going into the Chevalier. It was like, I think it was the first thing, he just dies horribly. Guy in the top left. Well, he doesn't have flames on him. Yep, oh, there no, he, he, goes. Died. Yep, he died. <laughs> there he goes. Um, but you'll notice I have some fire markers. Those are from Battlefront Miniatures for their Flames Award yeah, game to indicate really cool. dead models. Um so we'll be using those in the future. They're, they're really helpful. And they're pretty visible on here. I haven't really looked at the video much since we recorded it. Yeah, it, I'm about to flip it over to the other side so people can see it. But yeah, the, the fire is going to be used for dead models. And we go through a respectable chunk of the pile. Yeah, I think you brought more this time than last time. Um, yeah, because I, I brought a second one. Yeah. Um, that I, I originally had one pack I brought two this time. Yeah. Um, which, which did fairly well. But you did mention earlier what what's the difference with the game size and the battlefield size. Um, you may have noticed on our last battle report that it was a little cramped. Um, yeah. Stuff didn't really move that much, and that was mostly because between the terrain and the size of the board, they could get in a position where they just didn't need to. Right. Um, stuff's, if you watch this game, stuff's going to move a heck of a lot more. Um, here I decide to just move most of this unit except for the Amon up into some range. I'm not really sure what... My my reasoning for that was it was just kind of, just kind of, uh, I don't know. I wanted to do something other than sit back and fire like he's talking about. So, um, but I thought you know give the I thought give 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 a target for mm -hmm. some stuff while I do some other things. Yes. You know? Well, to be fair, I mean you're sending them up there. Um, there there's also that degree of not 100, maybe 100 percent appreciating exactly 
what you're looking at across the table. Yeah, exactly. Um, With we, we keep dancing. We keep, yeah, from from that, but we keep dancing around. There's one model in here that when you see it go for the first time, your eyebrows are going to kind of raise at just how many dice this thing spits out. Um, it's, it, when I remember flipping through there, and it dawned on me that oh, it actually does that. I'm like, right. oh, I guess I know what I'm getting next. I didn't catch it the first time, the first couple of times I read that army either. Yeah, it was definitely, <laughs> I put them up there and it was just like, okay. Um, let's see. But, I, I mean, you're playing Caprice. Your goal is to move further forward. Well, um, I was trying to do a little bit more, more, a little bit more of a pressure tactic as opposed to just hanging back and and firing, you know, just kind of get up there. Um, the well, effects are, are well, they're pretty mobile. Yeah, I mean, you're decently mobile because with stable you can always move it at yeah. full speed and get at least a reasonable amount of dice. Um, but the other thing in, is important is objectives. Yeah. Um, most of your objectives are kill stuff. Yeah. Or get across the table. Oh, so I don't know if I did any of the stuff I can get across the table, but I had like two holds and you had two hold well you had a hold a hold, a hold objective, objective which is two objectives which are the two red ones you can yeah. see in the in the center right side um, there's two captures sure. so you can see the green one in the top middle and then there's another one right behind that uh, that gray building that gray building yeah um, it's another reason why we did the commentary because the table was a little more full yeah um, we might need to try and see if we can get an overhead camera next time yeah, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, I know. Um, anyway, but there was that. But you also had to wipe them out, which the way that wipe them out works is if your opponent has a fire support group, you want to put it on the fire support group um, just because of the way that yeah. the objective works. So you really want to kill the Hussar and the Voltiger, and specifically you need to kill the Voltiger to get the points because mm -hmm. that's more than half the group. Yeah. And then your other one was Assassinate. And your Assassinate objectives are, if you look at the top left, there's like this two they look like tanks so if you see in the top right and, and the right side of the of the map left side of the map i'm sorry left um there's the two unpainted gas rigs i did if you look a little further up and just to the left you can see the jerboa next to the burning chevalier yeah hiding behind some tanks dave needs to kill that guy and then there's another model hiding behind the gas tanks yeah closer that you have to kill. The dude with the big sword. What was he? Uh, it's called an Arbostrier. I'm assuming it's a French name. Yeah. Um, but it's a it's a reasonably chunky... It's the equivalent of, like, the King Cobra or the Kodiak in the other battle reports we did. Yeah. Where he's high armor. He's new coalition, so his, his hit points aren't the greatest. Um, yeah. New coal tends to have less hull, more structure points, so they're easier to cripple. This is... Another time, I want to mention the dice mechanics in this game. There, uh, the game itself. If if I knew basically by heart all the units that I had and what their you know what mm -hmm. their damage was and so on and so forth, I didn't have to refer to my paper as much. Uh, would be even quicker because the dice mechanics in this game are quick and we roll and it's like okay we know exactly what's going on like like that yeah and there's only one dice roll to do anything if yeah. you're shooting somebody you roll one dice roll your opponent's gonna roll a dice roll that is both your hit and your damage in one go we had a thing here not at this point but um, in this game we had to roll initiative like several times most yeah of the we ended up tying like four times which is really weird because I, I paid the upgrade for the task force commander and what that does is so normally your commander starts with an initial skill of five so you mod so take your high dice and then any fives are better to modify it mine was a three plus yeah I think over the course of the entire game he only ever modified one die yeah which was a little unfortunate. I think you got to go first once. Yeah, I got to go first once. I paid the last five. Turn, I, I paid five points to win the roll one time. Um, however, I remembered he had his third order. I'd have been a little, it, it probably would have been fine because he'd just been spamming orders also, the entire time. Right. And I also want to point out here yeah, that I'm running four combat groups to his six. Yeah. Like that's the thing about Caprice. It's just. You, there's no way to get I a mean, ton of combat groups. You you could have, because um, what you could have done is taken not in, well 
not in half. Like the Amon's having two actions kind of limits, um, kind of limits making it like like the group that you made with mm-hmm. the two models. Yeah, that's almost impossible. It, it, it would literally just be two Amon's at that point. Yeah, I mean two Amon's is a legal combat group. Yeah, um, but there's some weird stuff with Caprice about how some of the things want to work out. Where you kind of want, like, okay, so the unpainted Amons with the rocket packs, they want to be in the same group as the thing target designating for them. Yeah. Because they want to sit there and say, okay, I'm going to brace, you forward observe, I'm going to send a four dice missile your way. Well, there's no need to brace anymore. Well, so, um, well, well, that's the thing is, you don't need to brace for the, the, because you have stable, brace holds true when you're not going. Yeah. So what happens is... So stable doesn't work when you're not going. Braced it does. Yeah. So if the Amon braces on its turn, doesn't do anything. When you forward observe with the target designator, um, the anti-tank missiles shoot at four dice, not three. Yeah. Because you're going to get three Guide. dice because it's guided. Yeah. Plus one because you're braced. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like... And you'll, I did it quite a bit in this one. To declare combat speed movement uh, gives you the same bonus as if you brace while standing still. Yeah, that is yeah. true. So, or or use the order. So that that does come up. And that's 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 the only kind of strange thing that I noticed with adding stable to basically the whole thing. You really you can still brace, but you know you might as well just declare either, either way. Th- yeah. There's no point in ever bracing with a Caprice model. Unless your job is to forward observe shoot things. Yeah. Which, I mean, like, the Amons in this game could very easily have braced mm-hmm. on some on some occasions. Yeah. And then just sat there and bombed something. That's a thing they could have done, but, you know, a lot of the other stuff, like the Megadu, um, the Amon with the rail guns, all the Kadeshes, there's no reason for them to ever declare braced. Yeah. And I'd like to say, overall, I think you had the better dice rolls this time. Um, to be fair, the last ones were pretty bad. The, the, the last, my last game of stuff was pretty bad. Man, I, I was cursing dice yeah. all game. Um, yeah, after our last game, I don't really feel that bad. Yeah. Watching Jerboas fail five consecutive um, attempts well, to I'm not, scan something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm not going to spoil it, but later on, that dice rolls really... You, you get to the point, it, it, minor spoiler, you get to the point towards the last turn where it's just ineffectual shots. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair, I, I did stack some of the defense rolls. Like, we're going to get yeah. to some of the stuff later. There are multiple instances where the only really available model for you to shoot at has four defense dice. Yeah. And agile. <laughs> I know. But we're about to get... Yeah, fun fact, if you didn't know, the hover tanks on my on my side of the table have Agile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> agile hover tanks. They're not the only ones in the game that can do it. Um, there, are, there are some other Agile hover tanks, but... Um, yeah, minor spoiler alert. That, that, well, that's my Echoes super... are Agile. Yeah, okay. To be, that is a good point. I only killed, what, two of them? Yeah, they... The entire game? I never killed anybody. And they actually killed models they back. They were shucking and jiving. Um, and... They they kill stuff back, but I just I never could kill the stupid things. Well, sometimes it's not the model; it's the player. <laughs> yeah, because I I made some questionable moves because they were fun. I mean, it's a casual game. We're not trying to be super serious. Yeah. Those big dice. Yeah, I'm gonna swap them out in a minute because they start going weird. Because the, yeah. the downside with this with the big dice is it's very hard to roll a lot of them yeah um, and because they have the square edges you really really you have, have to roll, roll them, them. Um, what I really should do is have a dice cup yeah and roll out of that um, casino dice are cool they're nice and visible but man I think it's something uh, that people don't realize when it comes to dice like if if you have a hard surface to roll on I mean we have the mat there so that's that's better. That's better. They they bounce a little bit. But the but sharp corner dice need something to dig into. Yeah, if you ever go to a casino and you play with those dice, like on a craps table or something like that, they have to hit the other side of the table. Yeah. To to be to be counted, and it's for that. Oh, here we go. Here comes the hussar. I thought biggie. All right, so he's gonna go in. He's gonna shoot an unpanned affect who's sitting not in cover. Yeah. 
Um, the guy in front of him, there, there's a wall with a couple guys off that gray building. So the, the first, the, the painted off that's closer is in cover. The back one's not. So he's about to unload. Now this thing has two heavy rotary cannons. Okay. Mm-hmm. One of them is linked. So they got the order to let him have it. It's two dice base, two for burst. Uh, linked for one more. Let him have it for one more. It's six total dice firing. This thing just rolled a ten on its shot. The Affect gets a six and wins by... Uh, so the um, Hussar wins by four. Is a damage eight, and I think it clocks it for four damage and cripples it on the first shot. Yeah, I think it does. Now here's the, the cool part. It has another one of those that's not linked, so there's another five dice shot coming out of this. Yep. Uh, it's... It's a beast. Yeah, this thing gets a big fat shoot me on it in about two seconds. Once the it because it, it kills this Afek if I recall right. Oh yeah. It, it kills the Afek. Um, the Amon with the railgun then spends the rest of the game shooting trying to kill this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think I ended up. Uh, it did eventually die. It, it does eventually die. Um, a lot well, of so here's the thing. Like a lot of your let's st- stop giving spoilers. That, that's sir. fine. Um, yep. So there's a nine on the second die roll. I think I got a six again, at least it was. Uh, yeah, there it went. It killed, it killed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wrecked. By the time that I saw it, it killed it. Um, I don't remember exactly what the exact numbers were, but the, the effect died. Um, and then the, the, the tank's going to come around and. Oh, uh, yeah. So put its tank gun shot. Mr. Mr. Three Action Tank. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, to be fair, it's a 33 point tank. Do you know. It's a thirty-three point tank. Uh huh. Do you know what an Amon? Uh, you have React is? Plus. You have React Plus. It's like thirty. You have React Plus. I know, but still. You have React Plus and two, two actions. But and two actions. Yeah, it's the other, the other thing is that it has a light laser cannon, which doesn't do a whole heck of a lot against Caprice. We'll see what it does against. <laughs> I think this unit was... Um, yeah, the, uh, spoiler, these two models do a lot of work over the next uh, rest of the game. By the way, just as a note here, um, we did roll four turns for the length. Yeah. And we rolled corners deployment again. So I'm, yeah. I'm deploying in the top left, Dave's deploying in the bottom right. <laughs> yeah. So that's why, like, the, the side of the table where Dave, like, the Kadeshes and the um, Akos are closer to the camera is almost completely devoid of my models. It's cause just oh, and, uh, and in case you didn't notice, I forgot my tape measure. Yeah. So we had a sheer one. It happens. Uh, I, w- I would like to. I would like to mention that uh, I work with a, a couple different people doing videos and stuff. Uh, depending on what the game is, Nick and I basically are exclusively the heavy gear blitz guys when it comes. We're working on the other ones. To, to this but um, when it comes to this game but I I was what like an hour late <laughs> hour and a half hour and a half late we started recording. an hour and a half behind um, and I apologized to him because you know I respect his time and everybody has things they have to do that wasn't but, the issue the issue was but the, store to his, clo- the store closed at 5 yeah exactly so we, we kind of had to rush but to out. His, his credit he was just like that's okay, well... So my day job is I'm actually a college professor, and I'm on summer break right now. What is the schedule you speak of? Right, yeah, I know. I know. Because um, I don't have summer classes, so it's like, yeah, whatever, I don't really care. I have to go... It's been fantastic. So did you know, la- um, last week, I painted 105 Space Marine models. Oof. I don't know, I don't know if I should congratulate you or give you my condolences. <laughs> they Ugh. were primed. Ugh. I know, I'm still trying to finish painting. Uh, it's going to be busy when that new starts. I'm still trying to finish painting 12 Blood Bowl models. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, be, to be fair, the paint job I do, I, I go for the fast and effective paint jobs. You'll notice my new coal. Um, um, if you have watched any of your painting streams, and we actually have a series coming out where I'm gonna, I go through the painting process on some of these models, yeah. where you see that the paint job on this is so obnoxiously fast that yes. I can literally crank out. I actually got another shipment of models. It was another one of those Fusilier tanks. It was like four or five gears and another hover tank. And I painted the whole thing in an hour. Yeah. Once I got the, the base color down. I will say, yeah. They, 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 that's the thing about it, though. Um, with this particular 
and even Space Marines. Like with this particular thing, uh, actually no, I think you you do a pretty pretty quick paint job on most of the models, mm -hmm. like your Yo ball models. I, I I go for quick and efficient. Yeah, um, and I'm not gonna. I, I I have sat down and really painted some models, you know, edge highlighted with multiple layers and all that. But when you're doing an army that just isn't practical, yeah, um, I go to enough tournaments and things like that where having a painted army is relevant. That you know, getting a decent paint job now is more important than getting an amazing paint job. They look year. good. They look Thank real you. good. I mean, they look fantastic on this. And that's, really that, like. that's my goal. I, I go by, um, I had a fan, an old Warhammer fantasy player explain to me as the uh, the four foot standard. Yeah. Your opponent's not really going to be close to about four feet away from your yeah. mouse. And if it looks good at that distance, it's probably well, fine. I have two things on that. So anybody who's watched the Hobby Backlog, mm -hmm. it was my live stream that I've been painting on. Uh, last time I assembled those models, some of those models <laughs> with magnets. Um, but anyway, the, um, the thing is uh, that I always say on that is the only the only thing that matters is if you're satisfied with the model when it's done. I completely agree. Because with that. no matter what anybody says, you know. Now, if you do a poor job and you're not satisfied with it, you're going to look at them, and every time you see them, you're going to be like, "Uh." But the only thing that's important is that you're satisfied with the paint job when it's done. They don't matter. And then taking a, a tip from Tony Soprano, if they don't like it, tell them to look closer and then smash their head into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see what I want the model to survive. I know. Well, get a real um, pokey one. Yeah. Go get some of the old Chaos Space Marine models. Yeah. Back when Spiky Bits was an actual upgrade. Right. Yep. Bad there, there goes the casino dice. Um, There's stuns a skill point. And rolls only slightly better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he, they, they tried. One of these tanks becomes a cockroach, spoiler alert. It just doesn't die. And you won't be able to see it. Uh, no, it, it'll, it'll go hiding. You might be able to comes. see the, the back end of it on here. But if Dave starts pointing towards that left tank. I'm about, I almost pointed at the screen just now trying to tell people where, things, <laughs> where it was going to go. But I've had to resist that urge already. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, with paintings, it's like, are you satisfied with it? Yes or no? There's a reroll into a worst die roll. I might be able to put something in there to, to indicate. Yeah, we could put an arrow. It's like, you know, cockroach hiding here. Well, that's the other thing. Uh, I had a couple of things planned for this video. Uh, Nick said at the beginning of this video, when I said, if I finally got the video up or what, or I'm going to get this video edited up and then we're going <laughs> to do, well, there he goes, well, hopefully it doesn't take four months. First of all, it was not four months. Second of all, I thought it was four months because we recorded we had in a, February. We had a, a, we have a pandemic going on. I'm Se <laughs> Secondly, I'm still working because I'm an essential employee. <laughs> Third, I get put in the hospital for like four and a half days. Yeah, I hope you're sometime better in there. That. And so I'm sitting like going, everything just, just kind of blew I'm up just all at once. Off of it, but yeah, I thought we recorded it, it in it was, February. Though. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was not far off of that, but okay. yeah. Um, I was poking it, fun And it may it. have been late February or something like that. I, I, I was poking that, fun at that it. We <laughs> that we recorded it, but um, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Since it seemed to get good comments on that one. but um, um, you, you put a lot of editing in. When I finally edit. sat down to one of these, like this one's going to be a, just as much because i got to put all the graphics in there too, yeah. but... When I finally sit down, even not including like creating graphics to put up there, but just like editing these things. It takes a while. We're talking like, if I'm really fast at it, six. If I'm normal at it, about eight hours total yeah. of like just that. And that, like I said, that doesn't include making the graphics, but I really enjoy it, so mm -hmm. it's not that big a deal. Um, and I just put B roll footage on. And then he goes. <laughs> And then I and then did I everybody, telling, did everybody enjoy my opening trading cards video? <laughs> what, what what were those cards? <laughs> Force of will. Okay, I, I kept asking myself that. What were those cards? I'm one of the people who hates themselves. I play Force of Will. Okay, so okay, so stuff going on. Um, the Akko. Oh, that's right. Closest to the cameras. Going. On purpose group. The Akkos are just kind of wandering around, but he's unloading onto this uh, fusilier hover tank, and he's about to kill. Um, I think he cripples it. Dude, yeah, those Akos did some work. They pink. The Akos did some work. The um, the Amon's gonna do some work. The, the, the Fusilier dies on turn one. By the time the dust settles, the Fusilier, it's either dead or crippled. I think on it's the crippled. first turn, it might be crippled. 
But I think it might die first thing next turn. Though, we'll get we'll get to that, but um, yeah. So Akos are really annoying with the rocket pack. Yeah. Like just armor pierce plink you to death. Yeah. I mean, it takes time, but there's five of them, so... There's, well, there's, yeah, there's, there's five of them there. There's actually ten of the little things running around. But, like, there's five of them in a group, so even if they don't... Uh, if they roll horribly, no no big deal, but if they uh, if they are on, mm -hmm. they can at least tie that up. Yeah. They're going to get that one point each turn, each time. I mean, five Akos is still enough then, to cripple pretty much anything anything in my army. And then, and then Mama Amon in the back just there to clean just up their unloads mess. unloads missiles. And yeah. There, there's a lot of anti-tank missiles flying around in this army. I did put a lot of anti-tank missiles. Now, going back, I probably would have used a little bit more, a um, little bit more like, uh, well, actually, I, think, I don't think Amons can have, I don't think they have a rocket pack. There. I don't know. I have to go back and look at it. I think you would have done better to, because um, I think it kind of took a little while to realize that the Kadesh, the Kadesh does have an ECM. Yeah. Its electronic warfare skill isn't great. No. Well, I think it's four or five, but uh, I think it's a five. Might be a six. The Kadesh is not great. The Bashan's the good one. That's right. The Bashan's, the Bashan's, the, Bashan's the, four. the Bashan's the four. Um, I think it's a five. I know it's not a six, but. but there's some other stuff with electronic warfare because electronic warfare is kind of the black box of heavy gear where there's a lot you can do there. Yeah. Um, there's some other stuff you can do like you can um, there's an um, you can have frame models buff your rolls and things like that and it's just things we got to just get more experience playing with and you know maybe in a year we'll have all this stuff firing off properly and the rules are actually out. I think I hit those Amon those Acos like a hundred times this game with those dice. Yeah. I had a bunch of cocked sideways dice. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the Echoes kind of just camp out in the dice rolling area. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not this. There's, there's a, a podcast that I've, I've seen. It's called Gold Squadron on YouTube, and um, they do excellent commentary like yeah, this. Yeah. Um, what they have is they have a second camera on a green felt yeah. dice rolling tray, yeah. and it's overlaid on the video. Yeah. So when they roll the dice, the dice show up on the video. Yeah, and that's one of the things uh, that... That is planned for the future. Um, I just got a new a new camera. Uh huh. I got a new headset coming in a week, so, so you won't hear the tinny crappy one that I have so right now. So the good anymore. news is that um, once I once I'm done getting everything set up on the camera and then know how to use it a little bit better, um, we're basically going to have a second camera view that we can use for whatever we want. Um, I'm trying to get away from just, and I've said it before on Facebook and stuff, but I, all of our videos, uh, all the videos that we've done as far as game videos or things that were done in the studio indicated by that table, <laughs> right? Yeah. Nick does his own thing with his other videos, like at his desk or a table or whatever, and does that recording. But if it's the two of us together, uh, it was basically just an iPhone, uh, and previous to me getting a different program, uh, it was just was just uh, iMovie on my on an old Mac that I have. Yeah. And so when I'd have to record everything, then pull it off of my phone uh, to wherever I to where I store the video, and then work with it from there. But anyway, uh, one one camera angle is all we get. And the goal for me, uh, I guess to say for us, uh, is to build build up slowly to have multiple cameras so and if we had two or three cameras in this instance we could mm -hmm. you know get in on the action yeah. a lot better you can see what's going on right now where um so my group of Shuster mark twos is going there's six of these guys um they oh, all have jetpacks yes. so what they did what they're doing first is they're immediately jetpacking on top of the building they've been hiding behind it the whole time yeah um the jetpack is just a six inch move to that location that wall that building does have a wall on it that's tall enough to give them cover yeah. Um, two of them are the new Chasseur Flugrant variants, which is, um, they have a particle accelerator. Yep. And the thing about the particle accelerator that's about to clock in and do a lot of work is it's what's, uh, it has a trait called Haywire. If it hits you, your model becomes crippled for the round. Yep. So they're really good crowd control on big models. So what they're going to do is one of them's going to shoot that close offec. One of them's going to shoot a mega do um, an Amon. Not that's especially relevant because the Amon that they're going to shoot is already gone. 
Yeah. Um, I kind of had this dream that like later on I might get some shots on it, but it didn't work out. Yeah. Because I think the the plan was to forward observe it with some of the fusiliers mm -hmm. and the artillery and see if I could kill both Offex and an Amon on one turn. Um, yeah. But they go up there, they cripple both of them, they unload some shots onto the Offex, do some damage to it. Um, and they are going to kind of camp out there for a while. Well, these guys do some work. Um, they're, um, they're going to camp there for a while. And it's just... the one thing that I really didn't use. Uh, a couple times I used my jet, my jet pack. You didn't have a lot of really to jet pack over. I mean, I, I could have. You were thinking about jetpacking on top of a refinery for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is there's no wall there's there. No wall, yeah. So there's nothing to grant cover. I should have pulled them up and just jumped into that big... GW uh, thing there. Bastion. The Bastion. Yeah. Um, I, when, when I set the train up, I tried to set it up as evenly as possible. It was pretty, um, it was pretty good. Yeah, I, th I think the train worked out fairly well. Um, uh, now I'm thinking that I should have uh, evened it up two Amons and two Megadews in those units. I think it would have worked out better. Drop one of the rocket ones or the railgun guy? The railgun guy. The railgun guy. Okay. Because that would have given a little bit more barrage, like a little yeah, bit more, more artillery. Yeah. You, you go all go all artillery is what you're saying. Yeah, well, I'd like yeah, but you, 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 you didn't have enough to really go all the way with it, but you had enough of it that it was kind of important. As you might see, as we might see a little bit later, I do like a rocket pack. Yeah, right. <laughs> so. Well, okay. To be fair, that no, you, you, I know where you're going with that. And this is a marsh well, the, the Akos are going to fire their rocket packs every single time. And the reason why, and we can talk about this now, is it's more of a game mechanics thing. The Akos have React Plus, they have an auto cannon, and they have a rocket pack. Yep. The auto cannon has the burst trait. Mm -hmm. The rocket pack does not. So if you use the auto cannon on your turn, it will roll four dice because of stable. And I th and I have to go back and look. I think you can react with the rocket pack, but it only would roll two dice. Yeah. So the best way to do it is actually to flip it. Fire the rocket pack as your main weapon, so it gets three dice on your turn, and, and then the auto cannon has three on the front. Yeah, with the auto cannon, yep. Mm -hmm. They have the same range band, so if you can shoot one, you can shoot the other. Um, the rocket pack also, it's more important because it's area effect, so you're going to get more dice against the secondary targets. Yeah. But yeah, the, the thing about the Akos you have to understand is that the rocket pack is the main gun, not the other thing. Um, these were all yeah. built with the light auto cannon. And it's amazing what one point extra of damage does. Damage One point or just armor piercing, because those yeah. little aquas have armor piercing. Um, but I don't think that the armor the, piercing the, would have been as effective at a seven or whatever it was. Um, seven, well, it, it, like the stuff you're sh the stuff they end up shooting at, it's either the the armor piercing is either really important or irrelevant. Yeah. Um, they're, that later on they're going to shoot at some heavier stuff like a fusilier and all that, and that's where armor piercing comes in. Yeah. The armor's too high for you to actually break the armor. But armor piercing kicks in. Yeah. Um, and then a bunch of them are going to shoot some chasseurs where the armor on my guys is so low that if you hit me, you're doing damage anyway. Yeah. Um, which is what makes rockets so great. Um, rockets are one of the more effective games oh, in the game. Right there was whenever you realized, I think, that he had Brawler Plus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> this is the one where I'm like, oh, I'll just move my commander up and punch that jammer, Bashan. Oh, God, he's got Brawler and, like, piloting 3 plus. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> Jump back. So he's forward. like, nope. <laughs> nope, back he's around like, the building. Uh, okay um, yeah, so he, he what he should have done is he should have jumped up with his buddies. Yeah. He should have jumped up with his buddies and just sat there the entire game. Um, but, yeah, that was a... Uh, that was a reminder that, yeah, don't get close to Caprice. I didn't think about that. I should have jumped. I don't know. Did the Bashans have jump? I have back? to go back and look. Yeah, I don't know. I should have um, I should have just jumped some things up there, and we could just have, like, a Donnybrook on top of the building. <laughs> I need to bring my... Um, th these guys aren't close combat variants. They're... they're, they're, they're well, your other one that we um, did in the 150 point... In the 150, those yeah. guys, I will 100% yeah. bring those into combat. Yeah. Those are a lot of Lanciers. They'll go yeah, into combat. With, the, with those pickaxes or whatever. The pickaxe and the two grappling cannons on top. Yeah. Um, or the giant Arbostride that's going to come out here in a little bit with the um, like Karakuri that's the size of an Akko. I'm amazed at how clear those dice are. I love them. Those are the dice from the Games Workshop Soul War starter box. Um, yep. I, I like them because they're... So dice come in three sizes, 12, 14, and 16 mil. Yeah. 14 mil dice are what those are. I think you're using 12s. 
I think so. Um, which are the twelves are the really small? F- no, you're using sixteens. No, nope. sixteens. Um, so the sixteen millimeters are like if you go to Chessex and get a twelve pack of dice. That's what it is. That's what those are. Yeah. This tw- the twelves are in the thirty six counts. I like in between those two. Yeah, those are the dice that I had for my um, Caradron Overlords whenever I was playing. Yeah. Age of Sigmar, because I wanted to to paint them that way, kind of like a bluish color. Mm-hmm. Um. And we could talk. I could talk about dice all day. I love dice. I get just tons of dice laying around. Now I, I have an obnoxiously huge dice collection. The okay. These are the best dice ever, right here. And I wish I could find them. Oh, from Destiny. Yeah, the manufacturing on these dice is the best ever. Um, well, while we're waiting for some stuff to happen, we can we can complain about dice here for a moment. Um, some interesting things about dice that are worth noting: Chessex dice are not random. Um, and the reason why is any dice that has divots in it uh-huh. isn't weighted properly. Okay. It actually does have some slight variations. Um, if you want dice that roll really well, my recommendation is backgammon dice. Yeah. Um, for my War Machine collection, I bought some back, some precision backgammon dice. 14 mil size, so they're easy to hold, 5, 6 of them in a hand. Yep. They're rounded edges, so they roll, and they're all perfectly flat on every side. Yep. Um, what they do is they drill the hole for the, the marker, and they fill it with a paint with the same density. Yep. So it's perfectly weighted. Um, it was a $50 set of dice for 12 of them. Yes. But... Well, that's the thing. So um, people don't realize that. Like mm-hmm. when, when you play as many games that use dice as you or I do, right? Yeah then you get to realize that because I have some dice that I bought I was like oh dude there's like 30 dice here and it's like 5 bucks or something or 10 bucks or whatever and you get to roll them and you're like that is just not right something's and, not right yeah um, and generally people wouldn't even notice that they would just roll the dice and be like yeah. oh okay it's what it is yeah a lot of people don't realize that the chess X dice are weighted they're actually weighted slightly on the high side mm. um, and the games workshop ones I'm using too very few dice are perfect, but I, I have a precision set of backgammon dice. And that's just because there's more material. There's more material on the bottom. Yeah. Um, generally, that tends to end up on the bottom or tends to kick it over more. Now, I don't know what what uh, you're talking about because I rolled these dice and I get ones. I, I think I rolled like 20-something <laughs> dice in, in, in Sigmar once. All right, story time. Most of them, those, those dice, and I think I rolled a one... Oh, I could, okay. That was the one thing I could fail I, on. I, I have a friend. His name is Donald. And Donald. Donald has two stories that have horrifying dice. Um, quick just note, just to catch up on what's going on here. The Shotsers did their thing. Now the Kadeshes are moving up. Um, there's a They're going to take some shots. Um, yeah, so we have those guys on top the, of the building. Yeah, the unpainted. Did, yeah, they did, they did their thing. They, they plinked an affect. They haywired an affect. They, they haywired an They killed... Yeah, because no, yeah, they they killed them. Yeah, they killed the object. Yeah. So, so the plan, my plan here was to unload. There's a Chevalier that hasn't gone yet that has an artillery gun and artillery rockets and two fusiliers with anti tank missiles. Mm-hmm. Put those into the Amon and either kill or cripple it. Right. That was the plan. This is not how the thing goes, but that was and the plan. These two Kadesh, which you'll see once the grabs are up, but the, these four Kadesh. Um, the unpainted ones are neutrons. Or the neutrons. medium particle accelerator. The painted ones have rotary cannons. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to the Don story. Um, th- th- these are tr- I have corroborating evidence on all these stories. Um, the first one, him and a friend of mine named Joel were playing Warhammer Fantasy back, and I think it was sixth edition. Yeah. And they set up a like eight thousand point battle. Ooh. They had an eight by six table. They spent the whole morning setting it up. And he, it was wood elves versus dwarves. Donald was playing dwarves. And if you're not aware, dwarves are known for having really good morale. Yeah. Lots of artillery, things like that. And the wood elves at this time had a rule that said at the start of the game. Their, their general got to take a free shot, and it could do its thing. Well, I shot it. It had a relic bow, and it killed the dwarf general on the first shot. Nice. No, no, no. The cascading morale check caused the entire dwarf army to route off the table. There was one unit of slayers left, and that's because they couldn't flee. <laughs> they looked at it, and my friend Joel said, Do you want to re-rack it? And my friend Donald said, No. <laughs> That um, people is that poor that game was impressive. Well, because the thing is, like the dwarves are like it's a roll two dice. You need a, a ten or better should, to, to run. That should never happen. That that really shouldn't happen. Um, the but fantasy, I understand. Yeah, yeah. 
But I mean, it was if you crunch the numbers, like you need a 10, 11, or 12 on two dice to fail a dwarf's morale check. Yeah. And you have a reroll from the banner. Yep. That failed like 12 times. Um, it was kind of impressive. Um, I didn't watch it, but I've played Dawn many times and I, I can vouch for his It's the only less. time I use my jetpacks. Yeah. Just to jump over my other guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad use for it, though. Um, anyway, the other story was my friend and I was playing Access and Allies at a convention. Oh. And if you're not aware about Access and Allies, the dice is backwards. Ones are good. Mm hmm. He was rolling with separate dice with somebody watching him because Japanese infantry were killing American tank divisions. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dude, I could, I could excel at that game so he, hard. I he, roll he, he actually, like, like, And I know everyone says, oh, well, you remember the failures. Him and I did this once where we recorded every single game him and I played for a year. His average single die roll was a 1 in, like, 0.6. I roll a lot of ones. It was comically low. Yeah. I used to see me playing. You should see me playing Sigmar, dude. Like, I roll so many ones. <laughs> so much so that I had to like build in to to um, I had to build into my army when I built it. You know the ability to reroll. You see, that's smart. <laughs> had to. Yeah, but then there's the half to part. Yeah, I had to. Um. Worst dice I ever had was at a War Machine tournament. I was literally shaking when I got done. Um, guy basically gave me the game on a silver platter. Yeah. And I mathed it out. It, uh, for those of you who are not aware, I have a master's degree in mechanical engineering. Right. Numbers and psychotic detail is called Monday morning to me. <laughs> I crunched the numbers on this particular... Um, I was trying to kill my opponent's Warcaster, which would win the game. It was better than a 99% shot. I have the math to back it up, and I have witnesses. <laughs> and they failed. And even my opponent's like, I I guess Not, I get to continue? I and so. that's how that works. <laughs> oh, what the heck is I rolling? Um, the Kadesh is no, firing. No, the, the, there's a Kadesh rotary cannon. Oh, yeah, it was firing at yeah, the dudes Because it's, it's, it's stable with a rotary cannon. It's the same thing my yeah. guy does. Well, I'm going to tell you what. But you I, only have one of them. I, I spent two in a way second. too much time shooting at these guys up here, shooting and throwing rocket pack, throwing rockets at them. I mean, you did kill one one of, one of them in the end. You killed one. one of them in the end, and you got like two points on a couple other guys. To be fair, though, what's going to happen here, and this was a misplay that we had. Um, there's a Jerboa that's going to go up and give them ECM defense. Yeah. And here's the thing: if I had remembered. Ooh. Um, if I had remembered that the commander gets an extra order, normally that's supposed to disappear at the end of the round. He could have just had it up permanently anyway. So, like, the net effect of forgetting this was fairly minimal. Because yeah. I could have just ordered it up anyway. But what's going to happen is this Trebo is going to go up behind that building, catch all those shots that are marked twos within six inches, and get an ECM defense bubble up, and uh, yeah. Took out the time. There, there, goes, there goes one of the Fusilier tanks. Um, that's what I thought. I thought it died this turn, um, but yeah, eventually those shusters are just going to sit up there in the top of a building with four def um, four dice in cover. Yeah, they're piloting skill three plus with agile, <laughs> and they're just waving the whole time. Hi, hi, Mark. Well, they're shooting Akos. They can't kill the Akos. The Akos are shooting them back, and they can't kill the shusters. It's like this little slap fest. Yeah. Well, the Akos haven't gotten there yet, but um, man. Those, and then eventually one of the Fusilier tanks gets the same situation up. Yeah. Where it's just like, I don't die, guys. I'm sorry. You'll see, like, and that's what I was commenting. We're I paused, uh, paused and then, like, kind of in the middle of the, after the first turn or something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what it was. Anyway, and I think the first video is just as long as, like, the, the last three turns. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny because it's like, it's going to happen on this where... You're going to fire off all the ECM defense bubbles. I'm going to fire off all the ECM defense bubbles. This whole table is a giant ECM defense yeah. bubble. So I brought up the Mega Dude to try to rocket pack, medium rocket pack those guys up top. Yeah. He tried. He tried. He tried. I think there were a couple of... Uh, and I think... He, 
Do you not already? We need to get you some infantry. Do you already have the bubble? Oh, I'm gonna buy a box of infantry. Um, they don't have the bubble yet because there's nobody close enough to give them the bubble. Yeah. Oh yeah, you haven't moved the, re- the other unit yet. Yeah, the other Jaboa hasn't gone up yet. And once again, well, I take it back. Somebody else might have put it up, but once no, nope, a- nope, they don't have the bubble up. Once again, we uh, well, we I, I, I don't, I don't like. I mean, this is not supposed to be a play-by-play so much as. Um, a discussion about the game mm-hmm. as we go along. So, sorry if people thought it was going to be like a play. Well, no one knew, but we want to do something a little bit different and a little bit more relaxed uh, in this. So, but anyway, what I'm saying, uh, what I was going to say is that um, once again, uh, a little public service announcement for anybody playing Heavy Gear Blitz. Okay, when you're looking at when you're looking at your opponents force okay make sure that you realize whether or not they have infantry yes <laughs> <laughs> they're so small at this scale that they just kind of blend in with everything yeah, you else you can't see it there's two infantry squads running around this table <laughs> on my side now. you literally can't <laughs> see them i'll give you a hint one of them's not hiding <laughs> i didn't realize they were there until one of them pops out and does something <laughs> no it was before that so I tried to uh, rocket pack into a group that had one somewhere buried in amongst them. Yeah, and then I put like, oh, like, infantry base. Oh, yeah, well, he can, he's not tall enough. To, to get well, yeah, that, okay, that, that is a good point I want to bring up. Um, and this is a point of confusion I've seen in a few places, and it actually comes up in this game. Heavy Gear has area effect attacks. And by yes. definition, the area effect attacks are not what you think they are. They're not a round coming down the middle and blowing up. They're, not a blast they're like template. a saturation bombardment. Yeah, they're not a blast. Template. So like it's it's a set of rockets going out. So like cover and all of that is determined from the firing model per guy. Right. And then there's a separate trick called blast that tells you do it from the middle. So there's one point here where there's some infantry get shot at, and they're in the blast. They're well within it. They're behind the, the, the center of the blast is behind them. Yeah. They can't get hit. Because it doesn't actually have the blast trait. It's an area effect rocket yeah. barrage going at them. And this little team with like their computer trying to like hack stuff. And it's, it's just like, oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, and so basically it's if you have four models in a group, okay, but one of them is in a cover that blocks them, it's basically like the rocket hits the barrier or yeah. whatever they're hiding behind it, instead of... You're basically resolving attack against everybody in there. Yeah. And then if it was blast, it would have gone from the back and would have just yeah. ev- eviscerated this infantry yeah. squad. Um, infantry... And, and here's the thing. Infantry actually got buffed with the... Um, we didn't play with that part of it. We only played with the Caprice and New Cole update. Mm-hmm. But the infantry did get buffed um, literally the day after we played this, they posted a new version of the beta rules. Oh, did they? Um, infantry got an extra. Hit, infantry teams got an extra hit point. Oh, nice. So they take two hits to kill, not one. And all infantry get an extra d6 from cover. Oh. So infantry, the whole shtick with them in heavy gear is. Um, is that public or am I have to? It's edit public. That? No, it's okay. public. <laughs> it's all public. Um, we, we, gotta, we, we gotta be careful because we got we got some stuff a little early because of this video. Like all of we two have, days early. We have this this issue. Uh, I have to ask him that every time he tells me something, especially if if it's included in the video. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the thing about heavy about infantry and heavy gear, is, and some people have questioned like, well, why aren't the in, why, why why don't you see tons of infantry on the table? Because um, the game's called heavy gear, not heavy infantry. Right. So the devs have made a conscious effort, and there was an issue in the last edition. No, no, I want to do a hundred uh, like hundred fifty points of all infantry. <laughs> um, <laughs> That would this, take the, the, so many infantry units. It actually, it takes so many infantry. It actually doesn't take as many as you think, because most infantry squads are five to six points. Yeah. And infantry only ever take two damage from a single shot unless it's anti-infantry, and right. the anti-infantry just kills them in one shot. Yeah. So the infantry, infantry fighting infantry is just a complete bloodbath. They just massacre each other. What's I'm saying though, but if it's like, say it's like five points per unit, that's thirty at bases of infantry. Thirty bases of infantry. <laughs> um, and. And just to make it even more fun, we'll just make it all these Star Wars barriers. <laughs> <laughs> you did probably like just trenches, infantry you know? Slow. <laughs> the yeah, trenches. it's the Battle of Hoth or something like that. <laughs> I'll dig in a bunch of infantry. We'll play Battle of Hoth with your Caprice. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, the thing about infantry is they made a conscious effort that and say, look, we want to be very careful to prevent infantry from dominating the game. So what they did is infantry, instead of being offensive, is very defensive. Yeah. So infantry, so like tanks are very offensive, high armor, but they get hit very easily with armor piercing. You can drop them fairly fast. 
infantry are harder to deal with because you need an either devoted anti-infantry weapon to shoot them, or you have to expend important shots doing it. That brings up a question. Um, so you said they got an extra point. Did did uh, did the uh, because there's a difference between in infantry between squads and, and teams. teams. So squads didn't change, the teams did. Okay. The teams got the extra. That's what I point. wanted out there. Because what happens is a squad takes three shots to kill, because of how the the the, the mechanic works. It, teams took only one. Yeah. They upped it to an extra point, so that they're they're crippled after one shot, and they can take a second one. Okay. Um. But yeah, the thing about infantry is that they just don't die. No. Um, and it's not that they're hard to kill. At one point, an infantry base pops out here and just gets plastered immediately. Yeah. But they're so small that they're very hard to get a shot on. And especially you, when you're playing with terrain like this. And I'm sorry, you forget they're there. You can forget they're there because they're not doing much of anything. <laughs> like, and then the other, the other Hello, thing... Hello, I've got is, two yeah, objectives. Yeah, the other thing is like if you shoot random shots at them, like, oh, you're in the area effect of a rocket, and it's like, I'm on three or four dice defense... You have to go hunting them. Yeah. Or you need to shoot them with anti-infantry weapons that can actually get to them. Which Dave does have. Yes. But it would involve, like, the Amon coming up and machine gunning them. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, it's a case of you can kill them if you want to, but it's opportunity cost. We're playing a four-turn game. Does your Amon have a turn to kill an infantry base? Yeah, and, I agree. Well, here's the thing. If it matters, you have to. But that's that's the dilemma that the infantry puts you in. It's like, look, you have you kind of have to kill them. Well, it's like in our one fifty point uh, threat, our one fifty threat value. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they literally just won the game because they didn't die. <laughs> they didn't die first of all, and secondly, I said halfway through the game before I even realized that they were yeah. even a thing. But here's the thing: even if you realized you were, they were there, what are you going to get to them with? Yeah, I, no, you I would have had to know. run full speed screaming across the table, right into my stuff. Right. Instead of me coming to you. Right. Um. And you'd had to get around stuff. The infantry was the the the, the goal was the, the infantry are not hard to remove if you get a shot, but <laughs> getting the shot to spend on them is is hard. Right. I think this is an Amon failing miserably at dice Yes, <laughs> I think it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's a crippled Amon failing miserably. That's at right. Dice it was crippled. That's why I did one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing is that the the Chasseurs up top crippled it with their flute with their flugeron. Um, they didn't actually do any damage to it, but they crippled it. Yeah. Good. And now I think a Chevalier is bombing it or something and like that. For those who don't know, crippled one less dice. One less dice on pretty much everything. On everything, yeah, pretty much. It's pretty much everything. But yeah, anyway, oh. that that's yeah. Reroll that. Oh, no, you didn't have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that second like actually hit. I rolled a two and, and I won. And you won. Um, and it, like armor piercing does one damage. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of that. Yeah. I, I. Well, your armor is high enough that a lot of my guns. The thing about New Cole is like New Cole doesn't have rail guns. New Cole has very few high power guns mm-hmm. that are also on platforms reliably accurate. Yeah. Um, like the, the the tanks are about the only option. So most of my shots is like I kind of have to just brute force volume my way through it. Oh, okay, oh. here's a Jerboa that's decided it wants oh, to yes. go die. Um, it is forward observing. I think it's the the back the red back Amon. Amon because it couldn't get a it couldn't get on the other guy. Yeah, I think it it's forward observing the. Um, no, I think it might be. No, he's going is it the Megadon? No, he's going for Haywire. He's going for Haywire. He's gonna Haywire it. Oh, and an ECM yeah. attack cripple it. Yeah. That's what he's doing. He, he's running up to go cripple it. And you would think that this Jabot is like super dead. Yeah, because I think I reacted with my Megadu. Yeah, you react with the Megadu. You would think this Jabot is about to just explode horribly. Um, Jabot's are weird. Yeah. It, 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 they, 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 oh, they, we're, we're getting there. I know. Because from that position, <laughs> I know where he moves. I'll give you a hint. He does I'll not I'll give leave. you a hint. The Jabot never dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that Jerboa, I just, I, I can't. It's kind of funny, actually. I mean, you can't help but laugh at it. Uh, hover tank's hopped over. Yeah, you can see the butt of the hover tank just barely just hanging barely. out. Just barely, yeah. Um, it's actually hiding behind a wall. Yeah, there's a, one of those uh, and, and Star Wars Legion barriers that you see in the middle bottom of the table. Yeah, and, and if you're curious how he jumped over his buddy, um, his buddy's a wreck that's an inch tall. Hover yeah. ignores anything an inch tall or less. Yeah. So he just, whoop. He's gonna try and shoot some Kadeshes. Um, oh, 
was that for? Oh. I don't remember. Did I put up something? I think, yeah, you, um, ECM defensed. Yeah. Please. This is where the ECM defenses come in. Well, this is the first time that I've actually really paid attention to the command points. Yes. Yeah. Well, to be fair, the cadets didn't have ECM prior to this update. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, any of it. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, that people know because, you know, you've seen the 150 points. Because mm -hmm. all the games that I've played are the ones that we put yeah, out. Yeah, that, that, that's it. And, and we're slowly building up. Um, so, so basically, like this game, and it wasn't even the first turn really, but like towards like the the sec end of the second, start of the third turn, uh, you blew every single. Yeah, I think I used it. every one that I could throughout the game. So, and that's and someone mentioned that uh, in our from our last video was talking about make sure to use the command points or whatever because it changes the game, and I would agree with that. Like, oh yes. Yeah. Um, it's actually a thing that, like, like I said, I'm not a fan of the, um, the upgrade initiative on my commander, but those extra orders were so good. Yeah. And um, one thing about this sub list that I didn't realize when I was going my list is this sub list can actually just buy another order for its commander. So I could have that little guy back there with four orders he can hand out. And I do think that, speaking of sub list, I do think, or go ahead and finish your thought. Uh, well, anyway, so that commander could have had four orders to hand out. No. He should have had three. He could have had four. I even messed up the math. He could have had four, because um, yeah. for some reason I put um, when I put the Shasser group together, I selected the command variants on a couple of them right. that shouldn't have been there. So that guy could have had four orders just sitting there. Up, oh, put up your ECM defense. Up, oh, give me a reroll. Yeah, <laughs> and you heard it. The mechanical and, engineer messed up the math. And yeah, that's how. Oh, I do that. that that's, that's that's normal. <laughs> um, and it's this little Jerboa hiding back there. And for those of you who are interested in the tech, um, it's called a Jerboa Sentry. It's the variant. It has a satellite uplink. Yeah, satellite sat uplink up, up um, increases your electronic warfare roll by one if nobody's countering yeah. it. Um, so what ends up happening is unless Dave tries to counter the orders, this thing succeeds on a three plus roll two dice. Well, and that's the thing. Like that's something that I didn't also <laughs> that I didn't use this game. Yeah. Uh, because I do believe that at least the command Bashan, if not the other Jammer Bashan, both have sat up. Yeah. But the, the, and that's the thing. In any game doesn't matter heavy gear blitz uh, 40k or whatever knowing not only your army and what they can do definitely know that yeah as much as you can that. but to know as much about the rest of the armies in the uh in the game mm -hmm. if you especially if you're playing like competitively or whatever but like if you're gonna play a guy that's playing like like i knew you were playing new cole for a few days at least yeah. so i knew we were gonna do this video for a few days and we made the plan, and what I should have done at that point is, if I you know weren't so busy, it, I should have at least sat down uh, on Gear Grinder mm -hmm. and just kind of went over the cards, right? Yeah. Like just kind of. But and speaking of that, before you move on, I want to personally thank the guys at Gear Grinder for all the work they put into that website, uh, and because it's all volunteers. Yeah, that is an so entirely volunteer being project. able to, and I didn't read anywhere it says we couldn't. That's why, but we use those cards for uh, the graphics mm -hmm. at the bottom. So um, I wanted to thank y'all for putting in all that work, uh, and because I use it not just for the graphics. Like I have actually printed out every unit in the Caprice Army yeah. <laughs> on cardstock in a deck box that I can go through and just kind of read through. But uh, so. Uh, the link for Gear Grinder, I believe, is in every one of our Heavy Gear Blitz videos in the description. It so, doesn't look like what you would think the link is supposed to be, but that's the link to Gear yeah, Grinder. Yeah, it's, it's a weird... But uh, I learned... I don't know if it's because I've looked it up so many times, but if I type Gear Grinder into Google, you, I, I, it, I have it, it brings it up. I have it bookmarked. Um, but, well, yeah, it, it's fantastic. Aren't you fancy? But, yeah, one of the things I like about Heavy Gear is... You mentioned Warhammer um, 40K. The best commanders in 40K are usually, like really powerful combat characters. Yeah. In heavy gear, the best commander is something in, you know, a communications and command machine. Yep. Um, a lot of times, the best commanders have the worst offensive output. Yep. At no point in this entire game do any of the five Jerboas on the table make an attack. Yeah. That's that's the thing. So, um, so basically, that's a great point about this game. Um, I've played um, Age of Sigmar. I've played 40K, mostly in older editions, but mm -hmm. 
I did play a bit when I owned the shop uh, with with some like some of the customers. Um, this game isn't just about getting into position to roll as many dice as possible, you know, to try to blow some stuff up, mm-hmm. right? There's strategy involved. There are enough different mechanics in the game, not too many to make it overly complicated, but enough mechanics in the game to make it to where there's a multiple ways that you can proceed, yeah. you know, with an army. Like, yeah. your, your pl- tactical plan can be so different from game to game, you know, and you have to pay attention to what you're doing because, uh, yeah, you're definitely not going to go in Because I remember going and playing Age of Sigmar and it's like, what's, what do I want to do? I want to get as many dice as I possibly can on this guy with a guy that has, you know, yeah. a low success rate, you know, a, a low, uh, you know, a lower stat. Low weapon skill. Yeah. So he hits stuff and he kills stuff. Yeah. And this one, it's... Killing's not always the main objective. Look at our last battle. You know, so... Look at our last battle. You had way more left on the table than I could ever, ever fight. Yeah. It didn't matter. Yeah. It's it's objective choice, number one. Which is huge. Choosing what your objectives are going to be mm-hmm. and placing them correctly. But the important thing... The, another important thing is... Playing to those objectives, right? Yeah. So, um, just a quick note: of what's going on here? The Akos are going and they're rocketing the chasseurs off oh, of yes. the building. The ECM defense isn't even up, and they're just doing nothing. Well, so this is this is the what I call the Ako conga line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're a conga line directly behind each other. That all five of them fire the rocket pack on top of this building. I think you do a little bit of damage to one guy. Yeah, I think I weaken that middle cripple guy. one guy. The middle guy got the burn of most of this, but. Here's the thing. What I don't realize is that once that middle guy goes, I can't hit everybody. Anymore. Yeah. Well, well, okay. So the cool thing is, you can target the ground. You can shoot that yeah. point, but then everybody else is minus one dice. Well, it's minus one die for the first dude, and then it's yeah minus it's, another die for down to at least the minimum of one for the rest of them. But yeah, it's it's not. Yeah, once the middle guy dies, it's like yeah. no. Uh, what are we I can doing only now? shoot one side of the. Uh, get one well, side one, of the one guy's not getting hit, no yeah. matter what. And you'll see a lot of the roll, roll, roll. Yeah, the, the, just going down the that lines. happens a fair few times. If you ever see me just rolling a giant like right now, dice. so I roll, roll seven, win by two. Yeah, Boom. Kill, kill the guy in the middle. Yeah. Okay, he's dead. Next, down one dice for the rest of them. Down one dice for the rest of them. My guys aren't down dice. They have agile, so they <laughs> miss. <laughs> Next guy, next guy, next guy. <laughs> yeah. So he, he not only does he have to roll hard, he has to beat the roll because of agile. He's got one dice. Yeah, I've got you can't, three. Can't tie. Um, and I'm modifying dice on three. <laughs> and by the way, the, the 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 Death Star hasn't gotten to fully operational status yet. The Jabo is going to come up, throw an ECM defense bubble up. They're all going to get an extra die. It's going to get even worse. <laughs> yeah, it gets it's worse. Um, but. Yeah, um, going back to that point on the game and having like all those options, there's a lot of stuff in there that seems a little weird or kind of semi irrelevant at first. But the more you play the game, the more you realize that there's some weird corner case stuff that actually comes up a lot more. Like um, we haven't done it yet. There's a sensor sharing option. Yeah, you can as an action take a model. Measure its sensor range, and then pick a friendly model within six inches, and that now gets its sensor range, um, which is a really kind of weird roundabout way. But it actually has uses that aren't intuitively obvious. So, okay, re-explain that one because I don't think we talked well, about that. Well, we, we haven't done it yet, so it's called sensor sharing. Okay. So what you can do is pick a friendly model. All right, is it a trait that someone has? No, nope, this is anybody. Anybody can do this. Anybody okay. can do this. Um, so you have a friendly model, and you can pick an enemy model or point that you have sensor lock on. Mm -hmm. So it's in your sensor range, not totally obscured. And as an action, pass that off to a friendly model next to you. Okay. Within formation. So within six inches in the same squad. And you may look at that and say, well, what does that do? So is it kind of like the... um... So it's kind of a ghetto forward observation. Because... But the cool thing is there's no dice roll involved. Okay. But is it kind of like the... In War Machine, yet the Warcaster can cast off of certain... Kind of like that, yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, the idea is it's sharing sensor data with somebody next to it. Yeah. Like, hey, there's somebody over there. 
And what you can do is then combo that with indirect ah, attacks. Yes. Now, here's the cool thing. No dice roll involved. So can so you... So it's unjammable. So you can censor... Get your, your, zone, your sensor range can... And then you can censor share with someone who has target designator or... It doesn't need a target designator. So any friendly model can do this action. Okay. It is an action. That's the downside. You can't get shot. Right. When you do it, you pick a enemy model or point in that you have sensor lock on. So it's in your sensor range, not totally obscured. You basically I see this guy over there. I see this guy. And then you pick a friendly model in the same combat group within six inches. Okay. And that friendly model gets sensor locked on the thing you can see. Okay. So it's basically like um, the now, Taunt you passing. you use the Indrick weapons. Well, now that model has sensor lock to that target, ah. which is the requirement for an indirect attack. An indirect attack, but not like a guided attack. Um, can't guide it because it doesn't have a target designator, and it's yeah. not a forward observation. That's the other thing. Um, yeah, that is a thing. You don't need um, you don't need a target designator to forward observe. Anybody can forward observe. Right. The target designator is just the guided stuff. Hmm. Well, that makes for an interesting um, strategy. And something to think about during construction too. But but I mean it's an option. It's not as good as say an actual forward observation. Yeah. Because you can't ping artillery off of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it doesn't work to friendly models outside your own combat group. Um, you're kind of tethered to the forward observer because you got to be close yeah. to the guy observing. So it's not as good as a forward observation, but it's a way to kind of mimic the effect. But it'll do in the pinch. Well, like if your opponent has a bunch of ECM around you and you really can't get that off yeah you can with this true all right here comes if this is this the suicide run mm, yeah yep. okay so same thing about suicide run like i did not notice that dude was his, there his the job whole is, time yeah his job is to see if he can haywire the mega do yeah or the able i'm not sure why i'm doing this because it doesn't matter Oh no, he's forward observing because the, uh, yeah. the the chevalier still isn't gone yet. So there's still an artillery model that hasn't shot yet. It succeeds, but they're about to get plastered because what happens is the chevalier opens up with all of its indirect attacks. There's a guided missile off the tank that's going to get fired. There's the guided missile. Um, wins by two, armor piercing. So it, it's pumping shots into that Amon, Amon into the unpainted Amon at the top of the, the map. Yeah, and the unpainted Amon, this one are Amon Busters, I believe, and then the painted one is the Amon, um, Perf? Uh, Quasar. Quasar. The Railgun. The Railgun one. Um, names. Names. Well, I like the distinction that the names bring, and if you take the time to learn them, you know, you don't have to say... The other you, you don't have to say he has this, this, and this. You say it's a Quasar. It's a Quasar. Um, oh, the yeah. cool thing is also the names are consistent in the factions. Yeah. So, like, I'm playing New Cole. If you ever hear a Hellfire, it's the Bazooka variant. Yeah. It, it's always the Bazooka variant. If you and hear a Flechette Hammer, the, the Flechette's the shotgun, yeah. the Lance is the anti-air version. And that's the other thing. So, in editing the videos, especially during that one, I spent way too much time. <laughs> I, I spent a, no, it was a lot of time one time, yeah. right? And then once I figure figured out where out, everything and everybody then, is, then yeah. So I, uh, which we did not do it this time either. I keep telling him to I'm sorry. I, I keep. Well, it's not just you; it's me too. <laughs> like you just get so used to play. Okay, this guy's going to go there. That guy's going to go there. But you don't think of yeah. it as this. Someone's got to go over this later and figure out what's it. Now I have some. Some on my side, I know the unpainted ones are this and so on and so yeah. forth. But on your side, I foresee a uh, fun time trying to to get it all together. Which anyway reminds me, I still need to get, I need to get your roster. Yeah, I need to send to that. I need to actually like fix it because there, there were a few errors on it. But I need to fix mine too. Oh no, no the Amon died. Oh no. <laughs> So while this turn one took a little while, two models di um, two models on my side died, three of Dave's died. There's some I'm sorry, I lost three models. Yeah. Um, some stuff's crippled, but this is the longest turn of the game. Yeah. By far. Like I said, this uh, it's still not over. 
I mean, we're like an hour in and we just finished turn one. Yeah. Which, you also remember that we are playing a game that is twice the recommended standard size. Yeah. The standard size is 150 on this same board size. Same table, yeah. Which, we used to do that too, because I think that changed, everything changes up. Yeah, it turns out when you mess around with a game, you change things. Like, so, this is 300 points on a 6x4. Um, so, basically, for mm -hmm. uh, the Caprice, that's the difference between two combat groups as opposed to four. Uh, so I, you, I would have been at three. Yeah, so if you had two combat groups, like, just take the armies that we had in the 150 game and put them on the 4x4 four four and give them an extra couple feet. <laughs> yeah, play it on this. Um, and that's where you'll see, like, the movement come in. Yeah. Especially with this kind of terrain density and this style of terrain yeah. where... You know, there's there's the, the shots are Mark II's on top of the building are about as close as you're going to get to a, a nice firing perch. Yeah. Um, the only place it could get better is if somebody wanted to get cute and airdrop on top of that bastion. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, yeah, that would have been really annoying. So I'm going to give um, credit to my Echoes here. I think it's coming up. Uh, at some point you decide to, like, just try to wipe them off the board. And I think it's coming up, but they, they're, they're squirrely. What ends up happening is, um, as, as we go through this, the, the Bashans never get touched. The Alphax are dead. So that Chasseur group's kind of sitting in the middle of the board going, what do we shoot at now? Yeah. And this is what they're doing right now, is they're shooting at... I think they're shooting at it. They're shooting at the Echoes. No, no, there's some... Um, there was a Chasseur that did some random shooting, but it's a, it's a taste of what's about to happen where they're shooting into the Echoes. The Echoes are in cover. They have Agile. They're piloting. They're covering each other. They're, yeah, they're giving cover off of each other, which is a fun <laughs> thing. Um, Dave hasn't put an ECM defense bubble up yet, but you could have um, off of that um, Bashan behind the, the, yeah. the, the shack. So, this game is actually one of those things where it uh, was a definitely learning experience. You, you, you can tell turn four from turn one yeah. pretty dramatically. Yeah. But... The ECM defense could have gone up. He'd been rolling four dice, and what I'm doing on top of a building, he would be doing on the ground. Yeah. And then these two blobs of models just sit there shooting at each other, which for me is a little bit bad because those chasseurs are, are expensive. They're nine mm. to eleven points apiece. The Echoes are only six. Yeah. On the other hand, they're sitting there dominating a pretty healthy chunk of board. Yeah. Um. And they've already killed... They killed a Afek, and they got most of the way through an Amon. Yeah. And and they do kill a couple Akos. Uh, I think one. I think they killed two. Is it two? I think they get two. I think I had four left. Maybe three. Anyway, they, they basically, like... That's one of the mechanics in this game that I like, mm -hmm. uh, too. Uh, when something gets wrecked, it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. And so, I think I... You Usually. Know, you, can, you can do things like... Put an Akko in between the two Apex that are there, right? Uh, give them cover, but also still be near enough to take an object. You know, you yeah, know. which is what ends up happening is these Akkos use. Yeah, I do kill two because what ends up happening is one of them dies up by that little building, right? And then another, that's one, another I, one buys it later. And there's this Akko buried between three wrecks of his buddies <laughs> at one point that is just unkillable because he's hiding over there grabbing an objective, and then two more shoot up to the green objective on top. And then every time, they're, they're yeah. The most, and keep mind, every, every, every time I shoot, I'm getting reacted at with auto cannons because Caprice. Because <laughs> Caprice had the react plus, like yeah. even, so. Know. So he's shooting me twice for every one time I'm shooting him. My shots are better. Yeah. But it it, it, it it's funny after a while because they just sit there slapping each other. Um, I mean, but the issue was like, what else was I going to shoot at? I probably should have just shot that um command that Bashan. Yeah. Um, but at I kept looking at it. I kept looking at it, going, "Oh, I'm probably not going to kill it." No, I should have just been picking at they're it. Not, they're not very strong. Well, they're, they're easy to cripple. It's just hitting them was the problem. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they they end up doing that. And it's kind of unfortunate. But yeah, the the, the Akos, Akos, they're they're. They're like that. They're like the what was that card in Magic: The Gathering? You tap it and do one damage. I have they, no they idea. They call them like Timmies or something. Magic. I, I don't know. I it's don't, like I don't know magic. It's, it's all it did. It just sat on the board and then it never attacked anything. It would just do one point of direct damage every time it tapped. 
I, I, I tried to play Magic. I found out that the one Magic deck I wanted to play would have cost me twelve hundred dollars, and everybody hates playing against it. Well, I played it for like twelve years. But I, I have no heart. I would play Slivers. I love Slivers that way too. But no, like I said, it's it's um, one of those game mechanics that kind of carries over yeah. between games. Um, it, the, 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 the little ping guy, the guy just ping, 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 yeah. ping, ping, and that's what they that's what they're good at. It's what keeps the big stuff in check because without that, tanks and Amons and Armor Nine models become really strong. Yep. Because one of the things I like about this game is not everything can hurt everything. Like Warhammer. <coughs> Excuse right. me. Well, and they have a piloting skill. The piloting skill. So, um, that's because they're they're agile and everything too. But they they can pink. They don't do a lot of damage. They can. Pink you, mm-hmm. you know, and, and be annoying with the rocket packs, but they what? when you try to shoot back at them, it's it's yeah, ridiculous. It's, it's hard, and, and we made mistakes. Like we we, we, we were shooting shots through Mark Twos versus Akos when they really should have been shooting other stuff. Yeah, I should have been picking on Bashans. You should have been picking on that tank. Yeah. Oh, I should have like my whole goal should have been to destroy that whole unit. Yeah, that, yeah those two those, those two, two models, models are by far <laughs> the most important. Spoiler alert: by the end of the game, they kill like. Yeah, it's well lot. over their point cost. The Hussar is like more than halfway there and it's it's only gone once already. I think by the time the dust settles they eat a Kadesh, they eat an uh, Megadu. Like they, they just shred stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I like my Hussar Lance. As soon as I realize I'm like, oh my god, this thing throws six dice. Yeah. That's really good. That's that's also with the change, it has a giant like bladed bayonet on one of its rotary cannons. If you get close to it, it actually will punch you to death. Yeah, because reasons. Uh, so this that was turn one. I think we're yeah we're, we're refreshing everything. Loading up turn two. I, I did try to with this list play a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. Like the only thing that's sh- shown up on the table before were the uh, Shuster Mark twos. Right, and that's turn one. That's. Right about an hour twenty, hour, hour and twenty minutes. Hour twenty four. Hour Which 22. I mean, compare this to a four thousand point forty k game, they'd still be deploying. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, the dice system in this is so great. It, it, it's, yeah. It's fair enough. It gives enough um, variation. Variation, stuff but feels different. But it's quick. You know. Yeah. Here you we you basically just is. roll that. And you know immediately, it's like, oh yeah, okay. It's a little weird to explain the first time. Yeah. But once you get it, it's like, wow, this is actually really fast. And because you're really. So the thing is, like, you have to look for that one die, which is your highest. Mm-hmm. Okay. And sometimes that's all you. Ha- that's all you have to look at. Okay. Is that one die? You glance at the other ones, see if any of them are, are better, and then you can add things. But that one die is. is a lot of times we'll just. Okay, we know who won. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, uh, in you know the opposed roles, right? Yeah. Um, the the thing is that you go, uh, you both roll, right? And it matters what the other person rolls. So like, if you roll, and uh, you know, there's, even if there's no way for me to beat what you rolled, so you roll a nine. Mm-hmm. And I can only possibly get a seven or something, you know, a six or whatever. I still have to roll. Cause and, and it's impactful. And it's impactful. So mm-hmm. I want to roll that seven. Even though if I'm, yeah. I know I'm going to lose, I'd rather take. I mean, sometimes, like, I can't beat your roll, but I'm going to re roll to make the, the difference yeah, less bad. Because I don't want to take like as much that. damage. Which does happen in here a couple of times where it's yeah. like. Um, I think the Hussar does it at one point where it actually re-rolls not because it can stop the shot but so it doesn't die. Yeah. It might have been it might have been the Artless Dryer one of the two. One of them, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's everything matters. So I'm saying it's like that's a thing I think that's a thing about some of the other games. There's a lot of wasted activity. There is um I was talking with somebody about 40k, and they're like, I, I was, you know, one of my things with 40k is the dice mechanics. Um, there's one way that you can roll, need to make seven dice rolls to wound a model. Yeah. If you cast a psychic power, that's a die roll. Your opponent can deny. Roll number of shots, roll to hit, 
Roll to wound. Yeah. Your opponent rolls saving throws. Feel no pain. Seven possible yeah. dice rolls. <coughs> yeah. Off of one attack? Yeah. Wait, it's just... It's at at, at some point you look at it and go, why? Yeah, I mean, I, and I, I'll admit, like... Um, the it's eighth, fun throwing a buck of the dice. The Aether Chemist, I believe it is, in uh, Character Knowledge, is the only real reference to Age of Sigmar. Like, I've seen other armies and I know what, some, you know, what they do, mm-hmm. so... I ran the shop, so I'd see a bunch of stuff, but, and I help people with their armies and stuff like that, but it's like, you know, you roll, you have to roll for shots, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's like, what was it, like, D10 or some, you know, some it, It's like, shots. roll 2D6, and that's your number of shots, and, I think it was, I think his was like, three, something like, like that, like 3D6 shots, yeah, so, there's too much left up to, to the dice. Yeah, and that's the thing is you, you when it comes to point costs, you have to you, when when you have that much variance, it becomes hard to point cost a model. If you go right in the middle, half the time it's criminally undercosted, yeah. half the time it's criminally overcosted. And that's having what, a nice rely one of my favorite parts of War Machine is it uses the two d six added together dice mechanic, yeah. which is very stable. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's another one when um, when I get it in August or September when the Warcaster game comes out, I want to yeah. show you. It its dice mechanic, while it is roll d six, don't add them together, is is very stable like heavy gears. Where it, it's is it? Um, it's not. Are they using proprietary dice? Yes, but I will give them this on their proprietary dice. Unlike Star Wars, I can tell you how their proprietary dice work on a d six. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, that's the same thing with. Like, they have two. They have two dice in that game. Yeah. The first dice is a success on a four up. The second one's a success on a two up. Yeah. If you roll a six, it counts as two. Done. You can replace them with regular dice. Whereas you play like Legion, there's like four different results on some of these dice. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, there's four. Surge, blank, hit, crit. And it's like, you well, have to consult a chart. And that's one of my biggest complaints of proprietary dice. And I think, though, and I think I mentioned it in, when we did the, the play it now for, mm-hmm. for Legion, was that I understand... That proprietary dice sometimes make it easier to know what's happening, right? Mm-hmm. Because when you roll, okay, so you say you're playing Warhammer 40k or Age of Sigmar, mm-hmm. you roll 20 dice, and you're like, that's a three, that's a three, that's a three, that's a three. You know what I mean? Like you're you're counting up your successes in yeah. that aspect. There's no doubt in Legion when you roll the dice whether you succeeded or not. Like, you don't have to go, is that a three or a four or whatever? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, that's a success, that's a success, you know, that's a crit. Yeah, you don't have to check a stat or anything yeah. like that. So, and I think that's the benefit of proprietary dice. Like, mm-hmm. with the Fantasy Flight Star Wars RPG system, you know, they're proprietary dice because in order to do the same thing with a regular D10 or a regular D8 or, you know what I mean? It would become problematic. It would be... Here we go. Here, Here's the here's the, the wasted time. Echoes are shooting. <laughs> Here are the four dice chasseurs. Uh, <laughs> the slap fest begins. It was bad. I think, I think almost in every one of these exchanges, though, maybe a couple not. I did hit someone. Yeah, but somebody had to roll terrible. Yeah. Um. I mean, I mean, you did do some damage. By the time everything was said and done, like two of those chasseurs, like that one, roll. like that one. Uh, you got and roll. Yeah, that was terrible. Succeeds, and then this is where the orders come in. I got a five, yeah. which means he lives. Um, and that's what it came down to was just how bad was the dice rolls. There's a seven, because why not? There's a lot. <laughs> there's, a, there's a nine, because why not? There's a lot of that. Um, but yeah, they, they just sit there slapping each other. But, like, I don't... My problem with proprietary dice is, number one, you'd never get enough in the starter box. Oh, uh, I know. Okay. And then number two, you... <sighs> When they're a required component, it means that buying the starter box becomes almost required. Yeah. And if you don't want to play what's in the starter box, then you're kind of screwed. Well, and that was the thing that um, with the Fantasy Flight Star Wars RPG, they made, and most of the Fantasy Flight games that use proprietary dice do offer them separately. They do, but they're like 12 to 13 bucks. Yeah. And you need at least one more set. Was that play Legend of the Five Rings RPG? Yeah, uh, which uses proprietary dice, uh, but they to their 
well, which mm-hmm. users provided it, but they canceled their RPG division, so that's kind yeah. of... <laughs> but, which uses it, but they also include a chart. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I like that. If you can convert back and forth fairly readily, where it's like you, you're using proprietary dice, it's easier but not required. Yeah. It's not the end of the world for me. Um, like I said, I don't mind it in Warcaster Neo Mechanica, which that stuff is coming. I got my decals are in the mail. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in seeing it. Um, well, actually, um, Josh and I are supposed to be actually continuing our War Machine stuff eventually. Eventually. Um, I have the models. I just have to... Uh, well, I didn't talk about it before. So one of the ways that I get a lot of my stuff is trading or making deals or whatever, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so I got out of Age of Sigmar by basically trading my Caradron Overlords to a guy for Crix models for a war machine. Yeah. So I really went all in to do it. Um, but once again, you know, the coronavirus COVID-19 thing really messed up a lot of that stuff, whether it was momentum wise or just I've had four conventions canceled. Yeah, exactly. I'm not saying they should. I was have been. watching um, one of our other videos the other day, like checking something on it or whatever, yeah. and we were like, "Yeah, Nick's going to be going to Adepticon," and, and then it got canceled. And we we're like, "Yeah, I can't wait. We're going to um, show off the swag bag and all that stuff." And I have no going. So currently, the, the way that the schedule looks, um, September twenty fifth to twenty seventh, I'm going to be judging a forty k GT. <clears throat> right. That should I think it might be one of the first ones out of the gate for ninth edition. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, which is going to be really cool. Um, it might be two months out. If the the release date of that's kind of waffling around, yeah. but it's going to be very early in that edition cycle. And then in November is one called Warfare Weekend, which I highly recommend anybody goes to if they get a chance. Yeah. Um, and it's it's in early November and is currently on track. Um, I'll be running an X Wing Grand Turn Grand Championship there. I don't know if that one die, but I wrote a lot of sixes <laughs> that day. But the rest of the dice were crap. Yeah. It's like that one six. And you're rolling more dice. Six, 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 five. Yeah. So it's Sometimes. like. Or it's like I roll one six and like one two. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to see how all that goes. Um, we actually lost a game store over COVID, one of them closed permanently. Well, said there's another one that somewhere. there's another one that I haven't heard about that I suspect might be permanently closed. But what's that? Kingdom of Hearts. No, it's still open. Has he reopened? Yeah, he's. he's okay. They're still doing things there. Okay, I, I didn't know that. I, I hadn't heard anything from him. Um, yeah. We lost one, and he said he plans to reopen, but at the same time, a lot of his big his big stuff is gone, like he already all of his tables and all of his shelves. Yeah. Which seems like the things you wouldn't want to get rid of. Yeah, it said. Well, I don't know. The Facebook post said that they were... He, he plans to reopen. But at the same time, I, I saw... Like, I have one of his gaming tables. Yeah. Um, It's in my gaming shed now when it gets... Well, when you place. change locations, sometimes it's easier just mm-hmm. to rebuild them. I understand. So... But at the same time, that's at least... I think he said maybe late this year at best. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's going to be a while. Well, um, where we uh, I wanted to mention that we are playing at uh, Hobby Town. Yeah, we have a Hobbytown USA. Um, they uh, have half of their building is gaming area. Now. Yeah, it's uh, well, they're, for they're, those who are local. They're still painting and organizing, which is what you can see going on in the background. For those who are local or may just happen to be coming through Fort Smith, they're on Zero Street, right in front of the Atwoods. Yeah, they're in Atwoods parking lot. Um, uh, the guys I've talked to there are all good, really good guys. I gave them credit. They're, they're one of the reasons why I buy local a lot of times because it's like they have space to run events. I run a lot of their events for 40K. And they also um, do, um, I don't know if they still do, but I know it, um, last I checked, they do a pretty good discount if you pre order, like for GW. Uh, yeah, stuff. they're pretty consistent 15 to 20% off MSRP on stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, they all are also a Hobby Town USA, so they have other things besides gaming stuff like RC cars and trains and stuff. Um, Which is great because that's where a lot of some scenery ideas come from. Yes, um, you can't see it. The next table over from us has a bunch of RC and um, oh, I still want to build terrain. I still want to build a heavy gear blitz table that incorporates my in scale terrain. Be fine with that. 
<laughs> I do have an in scale train in the closet. Yeah. Um, and I do want to put that in there one day and just like build a just, just like a little scenic board. Yeah. That's something I really want to get into. I think I'll start doing some videos on that too as I get along. I, I need to finish my refineries, um, which they won't be too bad. Let's well, terrain just makes a table. You know, like, I, I was watching a YouTube channel of a guy who did a bunch of like hardware store terrain. Yeah. And he had a really cool thing where he turned electrical boxes uh -huh. from like electric outlets yeah. into buildings. Yeah. And I'm like, that's brilliant. That, um, I haven't shown you them yet, but I also have... Uh, some the pharmacy they have salve containers that screw off lid I have like six of them now yeah and I want to make like a little Mars colony type deal you know what I mean like the little bubble yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah it's all finding time I've seen people turn everything into that like the uh, on YouTube with a guy that made like these uh, <coughs> stone pillar things out or totems or whatever mm -hmm. out of uh, seasoning bottles yeah. and you know um, back stuff. just some quick commentary in the game right now um, this is just flailing around right now pretty much um, some indirect shots right now I think I put a Chevalier shot into a Kadesh and it just failed miserably to hit anything yeah. the Akos went and failed miserably to hit anything nope nope Kadesh did die um, so what was yeah the Akos as you can see they're Congo okay no I, I got it. it it was the recon group fired um, unload everything. The Chevalier fired. The anti tank missiles fired. They killed the Kadesh. Um, that Jerboa just moved and is going to fry one of the Amons. And he's going to sit in that little hole the rest of the game. And he's not going to die. <laughs> um, so, a, anyway. I'm going to make a t shirt that says, Have you punched a Jerboa today? Have you punched a Jerboa today? <laughs> Um, so anyway, what, what he's doing is he's doing an ECM attack. He did an ECM attack on the Amon. Yeah. And what happens is if it's successful, you're crippled for the round. So by doing this on the big models, I'm effectively taking away a dice on their attack, which is so helpful. Even one dice off. That was a good roll. I had to re-roll because... I'm it, pretty sure I told you I didn't care. The Aiko's going to... I personally believe... Mm -hmm. I mean, my rule. I mean, my personal rule for me is if it's not flat, I'll re-roll it. Yeah, and that's just a blanket that's statement. It always. That's mine um, too. I say have to. I, have I see to people try it. this. Like, if you can balance another die on it, it's fine. I'm just like, no, just re-roll. Just re -roll it. it. It's faster. What's what sucks if it's a six? <laughs> you know? It sucks but, if it's a six, but then for every six, there's a one. Yeah. And I'm gonna get it on the next roll when I'm re-rolling the yeah. top dice. Um, so yeah, Kadesh died. The, the the plan here was I need to start working on objectives. I have two sets of hold objectives. Um, what the hover tank is sitting on one of them. There's one of them behind that that bastion. Yeah. There's one by the shed by your capture objective. Yeah. And then there's one way in the back. Um, and then I've got a wipe them out, which I picked the group with the Kadeshes. Right. And then a detailed scan. So. Um, I'm just working on Kadesh's at this point. Um, the Fusilier is going to work on the two on this side of the Bastion. Um, in a moment, the Hussar and the tank are going to start doing stuff around it. And, but but their job is to pick on the Kadesh's, and I'm sorry, it's not the Amon, it's the Megadu. The Megadu, yeah. The Megadu that goes with it. Um, they're trying to pick on them. The Shuster Mark II's up top are just trying to be annoying. Um, they have rocket packs. They're just going to pick on things that their armor-piercing matters against. <laughs> Or if they lack that, um, the tanks or the Akos. Look at that! Look at that smile on his face. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you roll lots of dice, weird things happen, and that's something a lot of people don't quite appreciate. Yeah. Um, yes, dice become more more reliable overall the more dice you roll, but the more likely weird things are to happen. It's why, like, I like that Hussar Lance is. If you do the numbers, average says it rolls a, a six and a half on six yeah. dice. The truth is it actually rolls like an eight to a nine on average because one of those is going to be a six. Yeah. So it's one of those things that like you, math, I, I like math. I do a lot of math hammer as it's called, you know, yeah. writing the numbers. But sometimes you have to understand that rolling lots of dice, weird things happen. Yeah. 
most definitely. And, and that's the whole premise with that Hassar Lance with the, the rotary cannon to say, look, I'm rolling off dice that one of these is going to be a six. I'm probably modifying at least three others. Yeah. So I'm, I, I can reliably expect an eight to a nine result. What do you have? Yeah, most definitely. I think I just moved that um, other aim on up. The railgun's moving up. Don't remember what I wanted to shoot with it. Uh, you shot the Hassar and crippled it. Ah. Uh, yeah. So what's going to end up happening this turn is the Amon's going to cri- the Amon Quasar is going to cripple the Hassar. Um, I may be killing an, an Akko and a Kadesh this turn. I don't remember if I killed that much, but yeah. did a lot of damage to some other stuff. Well, let's and see. then um, I don't know how many shots so. F- did I do that in this turn, or was it later, like in like the third turn, where I just started trying to shoot that stupid tank in the corner? Is the Jerboa over uh, there with it now? I think the Akos might start going after him this turn. Yeah. Because, like, what the heck else are they going to do? Yeah. It's kind of a situation of what else are they going to shoot at. Um, the, so, the Star Wars barricades are an inch tall, and the Akos are an inch tall. Yeah. And the Jerboas are an inch tall. Yeah. And if you stop and think about that for a second, you very quickly realize that they have problems doing things to each other. Yeah. So there's a Jerboa hanging out next to that hover okay. tank. There's, there's, here we go. This is the first one here. I don't. I just noticed it was there. Where I move the Akko up to the Jerboa and try yep, to punch yep, it. Yep. Okay, so he's going to try and punch it. And... Akko tries to punch it. Akko has Brawler, if I recall right. No, they don't. No, it doesn't. Okay. It's one of the few models that um, don't. The Jerboa is four, is on Pilot Disco 3 Plus. So, um, you, you, you punch him. I think you maybe do one or two damage to him on this turn. Yeah. But you never hit him again. Right. And I think I swung at him every you Swing time. at him every single turn. Well, look, what the heck else? You even react punch him a few times. Yeah. I did, it just um, couldn't get him. I get that one hit. Jerboas are weird because they're the one electronic war figure that doesn't have Agile. But the thing is, they the baseline Jerboa comes with an ECM plus, which puts the bubble out automatically and doesn't have to spend an action to put it out. Uh, well, yeah. So it it's effectively rolling an extra defense dice over its compatriots <laughs> that have agile. Um, that particular variant doesn't have that. It's it, it's the the smart game design the designers did. You either get a target designator, or you get the ECM plus. You can have both. Yeah. Um, because if you could have both, it'd be amazing. That's the other thing. Um, when you look at uh, it's the other thing that looking at the rules right um, for every gear blitz the 3.0 rules which we've been playing with since game one that we started that aren't out yet when you go to look in uh, something that's being built right now like the, the beta rules are still being you know Hammered out. I mean, hammered they're, out they're, they're mostly done. We're just waiting on the layout at this point. Yeah, but I'm numbers. So I'm yeah, saying numbers. So like, but you get to see within those charts what things cost, right? Mm-hmm. And that system of then you get to see. Oh, okay. Well, the reason why, like you said, this one doesn't there, have this is because it has this, and they are relatively equal. And the yeah, um, yeah. Because what they do, and that's worth pointing out, is um. Because there's a few people have questions off that because what happens is they give a rough estimate to everything and then a person goes through and uses that estimate to base the point cost off of yeah. And it, it can vary by a point or two either way. Yeah. There, there are some models that, that go a, a long way on. And some people get confused because they look at that and it's like, well, you calculate this at exactly 12 points but you put 13 on it. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why because not all things are equal to the sum of their parts. Yeah. Um, like the Amon has React+. Plus. Yes. The Amon having React Plus isn't really that big of a deal. Because what is it realistically going to do with it? Shoot a machine gun? Yes. Or right. punch something that gets close to it and nobody wants to be that close to an Amon. Right. So React Plus on it isn't as valuable as it is on, say, the Kadesh, who has an ECM. Yeah. Who's just going to sit there and React spam with um, jamming or something like that. <laughs> So somebody goes through, looks at it, and applies a little bit of logic to it and says, okay, where does this need to end up sitting on point costs? Right. And I, I like that they do that. Um, 
some people get a little offended over it, and that's the, the, the source of many discussions of it's like the you know, understand that this system is just a estimate, not a final calculation. Right. Well, you gotta look at everything. Like, like you said, it's not the sum of its parts. It's like, you know, because you could take all those things. Like, say everything has a point value. All those things you, and just basically what you're saying, but you put them all together and you just look at the model and you go, that just seems wow. too cheap. Um, well, like a good example I can cite would be say 40k where every model pays for every weapon it has. Right. And you get in some weird situations where um, Tyranids are a fantastic example of this in 40k. Their big beasts have guns and melee weapons. Right. But they can't use the guns and melee weapons really at the same time effectively. Right. Um, so you're paying for both, but you're only practically ever going to use one per turn. Right. So the model becomes effectively overcosted because it can't use all of the tools it has. And that's where a lot of this calculation stuff comes in. It's like the ACOs, you know, a lot of that ACO point cost is agile and the fact that it can reliably use two weapons. The weapons aren't that good. Like a rocket pack, like rocket packs respectable, the auto cannon's not bad, but it's the fact that it can reliably do both. That's kind of a big deal. That's weird. I don't remember seeing you not doing anything and I have food now. Oh, I came back earlier. You, you, you came back. You, you went and got a snack break between the rounds. That's right. Nice thing about playing at a game store. <laughs> well, that was the the thing. That, like I thought it would be a bigger part of. It. We talked over the whole thing. I think. Nah. But anyway. not, I mean, I've been watching it. Not much has happened. I mean, we're we're echo firing. We're chasseur firing. All right. The only thing that's happened is my recon group is gone. They killed a Kadash and they fried a Amon. Right. You did all of your echoes back and plinked a few points off the hover tank. One of these days, I, when I'm doing a voiceover, I will actually have a finished video other than the voiceover that people will watch <laughs> so they actually have some information. Planning. I don't but, believe in it. Um, but that's just a quick summary of what's going on. Um, and a lot of it's just kind of flailing around right now. And Dave is munching the nerd. And I already mentioned kind of the high points of what's going to happen this turn. Um, right. The Hussar is going to go do some work. Um, I don't think it kills anything this turn. But the Hussar and the tanks are doing things. The tank goes one way, the Hussar goes the other way around the building. Right. Because the Hussar is trying to like not get shot by the Amon Quasar. Because mm-hmm. it is crippled now. It didn't move and take some shots. Yeah. Um, I'll bet you that it, it worked on those Kadeshes. That's what happened. It tried to work on those Kadeshes. Yeah. The tank picked on, I think it was the Amon... Because um, I don't think that Amon dies this turn. I think it gets crippled this turn. Yeah. Can't see him. He's yeah, behind he, he's, the he's behind the, the, the tanks. Or the, uh, just, tanks. Slightly, just slightly ahead of the... The unpainted one. The unpainted one. one. Yeah, so he's measuring to him now. Yeah. Because if I recall right, that was like the first thing you did was put two more shots in the Hussar and cripple him. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get something into him before he Yeah, <laughs> he before got, he got out of Dodge, which yeah. he then promptly did. Yeah. And because of positioning, that other one is crippled and doesn't have line of sight to him, so getting a shot on the Hussar is going to be a little weird. Um, that, at least that was the plan there. I can tell you one thing. The game definitely evolved from the first volley of, oh, I killed your dude, like, right right yeah. off the bat. The, the last turn of this game, I think, takes ten minutes. Yeah. Um, because it's like five miles. <laughs> well, it, it was that, but a lot of it was like, there wasn't much to do. do. Yeah. You didn't want to shoot and risk getting shot in response. And I didn't want to come off of the objective that I yeah, actually you, had. Yeah, you actually went and claimed a lot of your, of your objectives on third turn. So it's like, you don't really have a reason to move. Yeah. Um, it's mostly just taking shots. Limited amount of models. Most of the shots that were left were at the stupid high defense stuff. So they kind of just sit there slapping each other. Uh, but, Yeah. I, we're trying to work on other armies for this. The problem is my new Colt's the most fleshed out one I have, and yeah. Dave only has Caprice right now. Right now. So we'll I'm s- definitely uh, looking at... Well, actually, we talked about that. So <clears throat> I like Caprice's, like, my favorite out of what I've looked at and everything, mm-hmm. <clears throat> mainly because they're, they have spider Uh They're kind of like that... Um, uh, what do you call the it? The is from Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Well, I was, they're kind of like the the technology-based, uh, what do they call it, the 
cyberpunk, cyberpunk, cyberpunk yeah. thing, whatever. But anyway, I like that the aesthetics of mm-hmm. it. Uh, I think it was the first one I really like looked at. And went, oh, and maybe want to play the game. Um, but I do want to play a sub list of them, not just straight Caprice. You might consider splashing into Black Talons then. Yeah, that was the because other. Black Talons. Um, I, th- I think it works both ways. You can either Caprice sublist with the Black Talons or Black Talons sublist with the Caprice. Well, I believe they have the options of sublisting with Black Talons, Utopia, and the CEF. Yeah, the the, the non Terranova factions essentially, yeah. except for Talons. Because they really, I mean, they're not. The, uh, unlike a lot, unlike uh, I guess New Coal and a bunch of other factions, they're not off planet against the CEF. Well, no, they're they're against the CEF, but they're not off planet. Well, Caprice is from a different planet, right? And like the Black Talons are the Terranovan teams that are off yes. planet. So Caprice but, is Caprice is allied with the CEF, right? They allied with the CEF um, versus like New Coal and Peace River exactly. and North and the South and all that. So, well, they're like a corporate society. Yeah, so. um, but they have some resistance cells, which is where the Black Talons come in. Yes. They can work alongside resistance well, cells. Everybody has that. But, not everybody, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's yeah. always some people that don't agree with it. <laughs> but they are a very corporatized yeah. society. But you, you have a good slot into, like, you could or run Black Talons. what's best for the business. Yeah, you, you, you could run Black Talons very easily. Caprice or Vince McMahon. Yeah, pretty Nobody. much. What's good for business. Yeah, what, what's good for business is all that really matters. <laughs> um... <laughs> If but, I were to pick another faction, I don't know where I would go with it right now. Well, uh, I don't know. Like, I really enjoyed the the first couple games you played with the North and the South. I thought that yeah. was pretty cool. I like my new Colt. I mean, but new it, Colt, it's, it's not that I dislike the other factions. Well, there's, there's, like, I can agree um, with that. I, 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 I would lean towards Black Talons too, um, just because they're a very small army. Um, I'm really curious to see because it's been. Seven years since they've had a new faction. Who has the koalas? That's the North. The North. If it's named after a mammal, it's the North. That's that's one of the things that would get me the to koalas. play the North. Like other than the starter game we played. Yeah. The koalas. T- the koalas. I it's, saw it's that. A, it's a paratrooper too, so you get the drop bear jokes. <laughs> the out drop of bear jokes. Well, um, I was looking. Okay. Okay. So here's the great thing about um, about Dream Pod not being around as long as they have. Right, mm-hmm. so you get to, so you go on Drive Through RPG. You get to see not only their older books and stuff, and then you can fairly cheaply buy the RPG books. Yeah, most the, of the, them. you can get a lot of you get a lot of them cheap. for like five or six bucks. Yeah, but because uh, uh, I still want to get the Caprice source book kind of thing where it yeah. talks about them. So I'm gonna, uh, but I was looking through their old. They used to have their magazine. Gear up, gear up. Yeah. So, the digital magazine there, and that's where I saw the koalas for the first time, and they literally had drop bear. They called them drop bears. Yeah. In the advertisement and stuff. Yeah, they, they, they know what they're doing. They're, they're it not was stupid. hilarious, and I was like, I must own a unit of drop bears, even if I yeah. never use them. They need to be painted and stuck up on the shelf. Yeah. So I have models like that that I'm, I'm never going to use in a game. The koala's a pretty cool model, too. I'll give it yeah, that. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, the North, like, it, it, it's reasonably cool faction. I, um, I, if I had to lean towards another one, it'd probably be South. Have you played, this is a question, have you played any of the other games that they make? Uh, no. Okay. Um, mostly because that's not what I got with them for. Well, I know. I'm just... I, I, I remember that back in, like, 2007 or something like that. So is that... Watching... That space game they have, the fleet game, is that like... I have heard good things about Jovian? it. Is that Jovian? How do you say that? Jovian. Jovian. Jovian as in, like, Jupiter. Oh, okay. Um, it, it, it's, it looks cool. <laughs> it, it's, it, if you've ever watched, like, a Robotech or Gundam space battle, that's yeah. how it's supposed to play. It looks really cool, um, but it's just one that I haven't gotten to it yet. They're, it's, they're un- really... it's unfortunate because there's not a lot of very good space combat games out there right really, now. The models look good. The models look good. I mean, if you want to, I have the combat, rules on there. Like, like, yeah, I, I, I got the rules too. I just haven't read them. Um. Anyway, stuff is happening. Um. Like I said, this I wasn't meant to be a plank. Play by Somebody plank. got planked, but I wanted to. Do, this is more of like podcast. I wanted to watch do the, Yeah, I just wanted to do this because like everything is so 
Uh, okay, the Mega Dew group's going up, but she probably just pointed. Um, yeah, star. so uh, you probably he's just moving, picked a few He's moving up, and he's going to shoot his. Um, I think he's going to shoot his like rocket pack up there. Uh, he, he probably has a heavy rotary cannon. He's going to shoot something else. Yeah, you're shooting one of the shotsers with your rotary cannon. I don't know if it's the rotary cannon. That's the rotary cannon. It's painted. It's a rotary cannon. But he has. He's a barrage. No, oh, that's, that's not the that's Mega not, Dew. That's not the that's Mega Dew. That's the Kadesh. The Mega Dew is going to go up and rocket something yeah. in a little bit. But yeah, right now he's picking on Chussers who are sitting for def- four dice defense in cover yeah. with Agile <laughs> on a 3+. plus. Because why I not? Know. That's cause um, why not? But no, let's not move over and like try to kill the other tank. Yep, let's there's, not. The, there's the five. I think I rolled a nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with Agile. <laughs> so much nine, it's almost ten. Um, but yeah, there, there really isn't a lot of good space combat games out there right now. Um, Drop Fleet Commander was promising, but they've kind of dropped off the face of the earth for a while. Yeah. Well, I'm really hoping that whoever bought the old Spartan Games IPs comes back out with Firestorm Armada mm. and fixes it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, what happened? Like, they had quite a few. They, so Firestorm, um, so Spartan Games died. Like, well, I knew that. Yeah. I'm saying, like, what, like, um, what tabletop happened to combat, all those games? Tabletop like, Combat bought all of it. Okay. From my understanding, um, what they did is, no, it might have been War Cradle. It was War, Not, it was yeah, War Cradle. yeah. Because so they bought Wild West Exodus as yeah. well, and they're rolling Wild West Exodus in with the same world as Dystopian Wars. Yeah, which is really cool. I think this that that's a cool universe. Yeah. Um, but I really haven't heard much on that front since then. But they also got the Firestorm Armada IP, mm-hmm. which I'm hoping for a fleet combat game out of them. Um, I had some issues with that previous system, but I, I don't like unlimited exploding dice. Oh yeah, yeah. No, um, no, no, they did make a Halo fleet combat game. Yes, they did. That wasn't half bad. What, they made it? They made, Spartan it? made it. Oh, okay. Spartan Games made it. I remember buying it the one year I went to Gen Con. They had the, here's the starter with some extra ships. And I got to talk with the guy who designed it, and it was really cool. It wasn't a bad game, but then they died. And you really can't help that. You know, I have, like, a box in my closet that's, like, dead card games, like trading card games. I have a fully painted starter of this game. We can play it if you want to. Yeah. Um, well, I, I thought about making a segment where we do, like, dead game, games. Dead game segment. Let's go play Warhammer Fantasy. <laughs> Dude, I would be down. I got I got a high elf army. We can make this happen. I would be down. I got a, I got an eighth at high elf army. We can play not fair. You could, you could probably, like, pick something up from someone who's been holding on to those models forever, just trying to get rid of them for next to nothing. Yeah, my friend Donald and we can play dwarves versus high elves. That'll always raise a good Dude, pressure. Dude, okay, I'm going to tell everybody listening right now. <laughs> If you want to get me to play a game, you need to do you need to put one of these one of these races in it. Dwarfs. Okay. Gnomes. Or um, Imps. Goblins. Imps. Yeah, yeah. Imps short short stuff. The short the short stuff. Cause I don't know why. I'm I'm six foot four, three hundred and fifty pounds, but I love dwarfs, <laughs> gnomes, <laughs> imps. Um goblins. But- yeah, we, we need to fight that. There's a game that I want to play, and I'll probably just end up getting a couple of, like, some of the models just because, and you'll have to play it with me. Uh, it's actually called Gnomes. What I need to do is I need to finally break down and buy the Fallout miniature game. Yes. Well, because the cool thing about that is it has an inbuilt solo play rule set. Yes. You can play the game by yourself. It has an AI deck and everything, which is nice. really cool. I also want to buy a Liberty Prime. Okay, I think you're about to blow up this Mega Dew. Yeah, okay, so the Hassar rolls around. I think it lines up on the Kadesh. Oh, uh, and then I think the Mega Dew fires back at it. No, the tank's going to kill the Mega Dew. Because <laughs> the Somebody tank, the tank rolls hot, hot heat and just guns the Mega Dew down in one shot. Um, oh, that's something's what's happening. I think you re rolled that. Uh, three dice from somebody. Oh, I think this might be the tank firing. No, it's the Arbostrier. Um, the Arbus trying to move up around. Yeah, he moved up around. He's firing a rocket pack out there and flailing around miserably and accomplishing nothing with his life because he feels bad. Yeah, he moved up. This is do with the sword, right? Yes, yeah, the Kara Curry giant sword. Um, he he moved up behind that bastion. Or whatever. He moved up behind the bastion. Um, but yeah. So, another reason why we wanted to kind of do some talking over this one because it's so it's so hard to catch, and I hate a real top down image. You know, mm-hmm. but 
sometimes you got to. I mean, you still you still follow along with what's going on there, but yeah, the Argo Star is going up. The Chevaliers are going with the Chevalier. The one leftover one's going with it. I think they fail miserably to do anything. Yeah, I think so too. But in a moment, the Hussar and the Voltiger are coming around and blow both the Kadesh and the Megadu up. Yep. So I'm pretty sure that happens this turn because then the, the Hussar dies on the on the follow up turn. And the the Vashon stays there to hold the objective, which is under the Megadu. Yeah, the the objective's under the Megadu. Um, but yeah, it's it's getting close to the end of this. Yeah, the the video is in two parts, so we're we're gonna have a little split here in a moment. Um, you guys probably won't really notice it, but it'll be for us. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, with we did meet a couple uh, nice people who, who were interested. Who yeah. Were interested in um, but yeah, speaking of games we need to play, um, Warcast Neo Mechanica Kickstarter yeah. shipping later, and the BattleTech Kickstarter at least the first wave should be shipping by the end of the year, so we can play probably Alpha Strike because I can't stand classic BattleTech. Yeah, I can. I don't have time for that. Well, <laughs> it's not even that I don't have time for it part. Um, although I do agree with you, four hours for a four on four is a little ridiculous. My problem is I don't like ultra low model count because let me let me explain to you my first exposure to classic BattleTech as a game. When I that wasn't my first exposure to the franchise. I'm very familiar with the franchise. But the first time I sat down and played a game of classic BattleTech at a convention at a show, first shot headshot one of my mechs. I only had two of them. Yeah. The game stopped being fun. Oh, yeah. Because I had one mech and it just got ho- well, it, it got hosed. But I, I'm playing an RPG at that point. With the amount of detail, you, you you know your game system detailed when Dungeons and Dragons has less mechanics than you do. Yeah. But the Alpha Strike rule set simplifies a lot of stuff. Um, if you've played the turn-based BattleTech for PC, it plays a lot like that. It it, it plays really larger battles. You know, twelve yeah. on twelve, thirty-six to thirty-six. Um, doesn't require it to be balanced per uh, number of models, but yeah. it also doesn't play in a grid and look like a board game from the eighties. And I will. From what you said, I would tell you that's also one of the reasons why I love this game so much. Is you talked about the game became not fun when you played BattleTech, right? Because the dude had shot the one guy and you only had two, so on and so forth. I have yet to play, and I haven't played a bunch of games with it, but I've yet to play a game, even when we're sitting there, like really talking to the people who are watching about mm-hmm. what we're doing and what you know the rules and so on and so forth. I've yet to play a game where I didn't come uh, away with at least one good memory. Yeah, and, and to be other. fair, th- this game is actually fairly close. If you actually watch what's going on, this game is actually fairly close. Yeah. Um, it tips one way here soon. Right. Because it might be this turn, it might be next turn, but the, it very quickly the, the Megadu, a Kadesh, and the other Amon is going to die. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the death knell of the Caprice offensive capability. Yeah. But this is a pretty tight game up until then. Yeah, and like I said, that's... Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I like having losses. I like having a flow to the battle. Mm-hmm. Um, I like having a battle, not a firefight. Yeah, and everything is... I mean... I can tell a story from every game we play. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean like... Oh, that you rolled bad and then no, I mean like I can tell you the story. Like uh, when it comes down to the one game we played before, where you know you go to melee me, I kill your dude. You know I wreck your beagle and then, wreck, use, the and then use the corpses the cover dude. against your range yeah. guy. You know, or the dude that comes out from behind with and, and splits his shots and, and just kills, kills one guys. dude. You know, not the other, but he basically saves. You know, that's his last ditch effort. Uh, it, in this uh, in this game. I mean, the t- you know you've got you've got the Aqua who's the, the, trying desperately to yeah. kill a, to kill a Draboa. Yeah, this guy can't kill a Draboa. The rest of the Akos can't kill a tank. Yeah, they're, they're, there's this Hussar stalking around that's just murdering everything it points at. Yeah, so it's like you know, it, and not in a way that I feel. And the like, Akos saved the day. Spoiler alert: the Akos kill the Hussar. <laughs> the Akos. <laughs> The little six-point Akos who don't actually do any damage. AP, baby. Kill it. The Amon Quasar doesn't do it. The Megadus don't do it. <laughs> AP, the last two points. I yeah, a- AP's the last couple points off. But, you know, and that's the thing. Um, there's so many ways to play, you know. 
so many ways to play. And like I said, I can't wait till, um, well, you know, I mean, that's quote unquote finished, but I will play Caprice. It'll be my main faction and who knows, maybe down the line, I'll pick up a couple from here or there, but I will more than likely play a sub list from once I actually, you know, as I'm building, I'll be building a sub list army or force not just a straight caprice force <clears throat> now the one cool thing about one of the sub lists uh, and i remember it's the one with the black talons or the cef i can't remember but there's one sub list for the caprice that allows you to have unlimited duelists uh i'd have to go back and look yeah it's there i just don't remember which one it was yeah i don't remember who that is i what? i know caprice gets special access to duelists yeah it's like uh, well, well, because normally, like the a mega dude can't be a duelist. Yes, uh, but also I do believe there's a limit to the number of duelists. One. Uh, in the whole force, or just a per combat group. One per force. Right. I believe that that sub list, and I, I often look it up, and I'll comment on it on Facebook. There, there is a sub list for Caprice that gives you unlimited duelist, or at least a duelist per combat group. But that also brings in points for force construction. Yeah. Because <clears throat> duelists aren't cheap in some in some cases. Um, Caprice Liberati Resistance. Yeah, Liberati Resistance. Um, and that's the one that gives you allies, black talons, you yeah. and Eden. Yeah. Um, here's the resistance. This force may select any gear strider model from the Caprice force as a duelist. May ignore the normal limit of one duelist. Yeah. <laughs> and include any number of duelists. Yes. Um, duelist isn't truly a free upgrade. It's like two points because you got to yeah. upgrade to veteran status. But then you pay for the. But we haven't done it. But there's some really cool stuff. There's a um, a rule called lead by example, where if it damages something, everybody around yeah. it gets a skill point for a reroll. Um, may select secondary units from a chosen faction: Black Hills, Utopia, or Eden. You get to flank one unit, and you always have an assassinate objective. Yeah. It's reasonable. Um, yeah, the, new, the my the sublist I'm playing right now got updated. Um, now, the commander can purchase an extra command point. Yeah. So it, the, the, in this case, I could have had four. Um, one gear unit can flank or pathfinder. So pathfinder or um, flank is come off table edge, or deploy on table edge. Pathfinder is deploy six inches further forward, and then it gets the option to purchase agile now. Oh. Across the board on all the gears. What's that cost? It's one point per per gear. It's not bad. Um, I that sounds annoying. Agile can be annoying. To be fair, a lot of the stuff in New Cole that is really annoying with Agile already has it. Yeah. Um, but it would be like there's an Arbor Destroyer out here that could theoretically buy Agile. Um, but New Cole's meant to be that high speed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to call them the Blitzkrieg Army, but they're kind of the Blitzkrieg Army, where it's mm -hmm. like they are a very high speed. They can't take a hit very well. Right, but well, and but they still have a bunch of like force option, uh, force construction options. Yeah, they're gonna have a bunch of force construction options. They have some weird sublists. Like if if you look at the nuclear sublists, they get weird. There's one of them that's like, the heck is this? <laughs> yeah, because um, each squad is different. Mm -hmm. Comes from a different city state, and they all have their own special rules. So effectively, each squad gets its own sublist. Yeah, um, but it, it's that high speed, low drag mentality of their stuff is more is, is more fragile. But it's generally faster and more agile. Right. And, and that's why one thing watching New Cole might come up as we do these battle reports more in the future. If New Cole rolls bad, it's apocalyptic. Yeah. Um, like, you know, there, there's these four dice little Shastur Mark IIs up top. If they roll bad, they they get hit hard. Yeah. Like, it hurts bad when they get hit. Yeah, and... Uh, continuing the conversation of the sub-list thing... And the sublist is kind of the way that we talked about Caprice. Caprice is like the corporate faction, basically, right? It's a number of yeah. corporations. But we talked about the allying with the CEF, but there are some who aren't the Libertari. Uh, the, There's the Liberati, which are Liberati, the, they, I do they believe, live on the outside. I do believe the Liberati are the one. They're the resistance. The resistance, yeah. But yeah, it, it's meant to represent the different aspects. Um, in the north and south, it's the respective nations that make up those factions. Yeah. It, it's definitely lore-based, and it definitely gives depth. Yeah. It gives and and depth it lets you it. tweak your armies, because they do... Um, we're we're re-racking here for the end of the turn. Um, if I recall correctly, there's a crippled Kadesh behind the building. There's a dead Kadesh that you can see. Um, the Kadesh and the Megadu are not dead. I think they die first thing this turn. 
Well, I know that, so let me kind of cap here. We have, um, I mean, basically, other than the Bashans on uh, that recon force, mm -hmm. uh, recon group, is everything's dead. Everything's yeah, the Offex are dead. Um, the two Offex the and the Amon dead. is dead. So we have the two Bashans that are mm -hmm. still there. And then uh, the Echoes from the other group are still there. Are still there. Uh, I think maybe I think one the Mega Dude's crippled. The the no no the other the Amon Quasar I think is crippled. Yeah, we don't have the numbers in front of us, but the Amon Quasar is I think is crippled. The Hassar Amazing. on my side is crippled, and I think like one of the Shasters is crippled yeah. or something like that. And then this little gap here between the uh, refineries and the the building there we have. You know, that Bashan's there, but the Kadesh and the Megadu there, which are still alive at this moment. Uh, we have the dead Kadesh. I think a there's dead a Kadesh, Kadesh in the Kadesh middle. On the other side. And just on the, just to the left of the behind that Bastion, I think the um, there's there's go? a Kadesh there. There's an Arbostrier there. The as Arbostrier's well. there, and then the other Kadesh over here. So I mean, really, things are starting to thin out. Do we have the the endless fight between the Aiko and the Bashan at the refinery. I mm -hmm. don't understand how that happens. Um, so there's still quite a... That's, this is what you're going to see, though. There's still quite a few models active. There's still quite a few models active, but the damage is starting to pile up. Right. And, um, and, and you're about to see stuff starting to the drop The next two flies. turns are going to be stuff is gonna boom, start dropping boom, like flies. boom. And you're going to see how much faster it gets. So Yeah, I mean, we just finished two turns at the two-hour mark. Um, yeah, it's like two... Two hour fifteen, we finished two turns, and um, it, it's not. It's maybe an hour left. Yeah, maybe so hour, hour and fifteen minutes left. Let's see what we got here. So we're gonna do our quick pause here. It's just on our end though. Yeah. Yeah. So All right, we're back here with the second <laughs> half. Um, so yeah, it took us two hours fifteen minutes or so to get through the first two turns, which. Again, considering game size is not that extreme. But um, as the models thin out, we go, I think this section is like... Th this gets a heck of a lot fast. Yeah, this section's the back half here is about an hour. But, um, yeah. And you'll just, I mean, we're just going to start seeing... Things. Stuff's going to start dropping like yeah. that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I guess what we're setting up here, just kind of like what's going according to plan and what's going, not going according to plan... On my end, I had hoped the Fusilier wouldn't die on turn one. <laughs> um, that's a reasonable assessment. Right. Um, I could have ordered ECM defense up, gotten them four dice with a skill point. That was my... Didn't think about it. Should have done. Um, but I was hoping at this point to have two hover tanks online yeah. and going through and doing their stuff. However, on the other side of the table, I really can't argue with how well things are going. Yeah. Two Offex got brutally murdered. Um, this is the one turn I win initiative, and I think the first thing I do is immediately go with the heavy stuff. Yep, there they go. Um, and they start unloading into... This is going into the Kadesh. <coughs> um, command reroll that, I think. Because um, you got like a seven or an eight or something like that. Well, it would be a seven, and then you got seven. I yeah. think. I think we're. I think I rerolled it. I think you rerolled it. I don't know why you would reroll. Re some, something happened with a reroll or something, or it might have been improper number of dice. I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, the Kadesh, the Kadesh goes down. Yeah. Uh, the tank drives around the other side of that shack covered by the building. Is about to unload into the Megadu, and it is going to kill the Megadu. Linked light tank gun, anti tank missile, and a laser cannon. Oh, yeah. It kills the Megadu. Yeah. And the Megadu, I don't think, has been touched at this point. Um, I do think. I was trying to remember. Yeah, he comes around. He comes around the building, pokes his nose out around the front. Yeah. Unloads into the Megadu, and then the Megadu gets gunned down. Because there's a there, there's the three. There's the three, yeah. Um, I rolled a five, five two by three. two. Um, I think it's firing like a laser cannon or something like that. It's not doing that much. Because no. the other guns are gonna roll, um, or it might be the anti tank missile. 
But I don't a- think, anyway, I don't think you use all three of your actions on him. The Voltiger unloads; it kills the Mega Doom. So with that gone, all that's left on the nor- the far side of the table is five Akos, two Bashans, and a crippled Amon. On this side, there's two Kadesh, five Akos, and an Amon. Yeah. And we're talking about the things. So, uh, like, things that didn't go to plan. Uh, obviously, the very first volley went to plan because, you know. Yeah, you, you, dead you, dude. you killed what you shot at. Um, but the movement of that recon unit, since it is a recon unit, um, was terrible. Running, trying to go, for some reason, just trying to. And I, don't, I don't even know why I chose to go up that route. But what you see is that the choke point that happens right there, mm-hmm. and all those guys just it was, start it was, it was It was dumb. But um, if I were to yeah, there goes the mega dude. Yeah, so if I were to redo anything, that move would definitely be redone. Um, yeah, you probably would have been less aggressive. Use that building. Maybe swung around or uh, used or used. Um, jump jets to get somewhere over an advantageous position or whatever. I think a better move would have been to switch the Kadesh group with that recon group. Yeah. Because the recon would have then been able to uh, have a little bit more cover to work with. Mm-hmm. You also would have had better luck trying to fry the ECM defense yeah. off on this side. Um, whereas the Kadesh, I like, mean, you're not going to so much get rid of it, but you, have, yeah. but you have better shots. Coming around with the combination of the recon group and the forward observation plus this general purpose group over here, those tanks would have would have been even worse for those tanks. Yeah, on that side. there's a very good chance that those tanks do not do well. And then swinging around, mm-hmm. right? Because it's the one thing with with the Caprice that I or with mm-hmm. even even in the other videos with the north and the south that uh, I think to do and then don't do is the whole. Let's kill this and then move around. Let's start flanking yeah. things. Let's start because you do get a number of mm-hmm. uh, you get a number of shots in the rear arc in a number of the videos. So yeah, and I've never had a shot in the rear arc, and that tells me that I'm not moving enough. Moving enough. And I mean, there's some good examples here, like the two Kadesh in the middle of the table by that bastion didn't move western. Yeah, exactly. There's no reason they couldn't have advanced forward. Um, you're not going to get any more or less cover from that. Yeah. But if they were seven inches further forward, whatever their movement characteristic is, they have more options on the floor. They have more options, yeah. I mean, they could have been putting things into the SAR. They could have been putting things yeah. into the other group that's into back the tank. there. Into, into the, the tank. tank. The, 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 the tank is yeah. very critical for your objectives because it's worth. It's effectively worth two victory points. Yeah. And that's the other thing. Um, that not taking into account until too late. What the objectives are. What the are. objectives are. Um, and, and that is a difference. And um, everything should be about the objectives from... Turn one, um, go. A, an a, a unreleased video yet is I go into discussion of the concept of turn zero. Yeah. Which is the the fact that a lot of people don't understand that the game begins the instant you agree to play. Yes. Army construction, force selection, objective selection is all part of the game, and a lot of people just write that off and just kind yeah. of do whatever. Um, I'm too analytical. I can't do that. So this force was built. I knew what my objectives were going to be right yeah. off the bat. I, I knew right off the bat. I think I made a better choice of choosing my objectives in this one. You you chose because I mean you didn't have a lot of choices because you had four combat groups exactly. Yeah. You didn't have a lot of choices. Um, you had a general purpose group which took hold, which is the the correct right. choice there. Um, you had a recon, which your choices are assassinate or detailed scan. I'd have gone for the detailed scan because I think detailed scan is just too easy. A lot easier, yeah. Um, all you gotta do is go within six inches and pass an EW check. Now, on the other hand, I, but have, what happened to that, I have seven models I can jam you. Right. What happened to the guy? You said it was a Fusilier up there? Uh, the Shabali, the guy who got blown up on first turn? Yeah. So, that recon group was set up for the purpose of assassinating someone. Yeah. And that, you know, that was the thing. Mm-hmm. But, it, like you said, moving that to the center of my deployment, to the middle of my deployment, as opposed to being on the outside edge. Opens up more options. Could have given me more options to get to those targets. Yeah. Because they're they actually, the, the two targets, the one of the targets you need to kill is fully exposed right now. You can kind of just see the token immediately to the left of the bastion. There's yeah. a little blue token. That is the back of the Arbal Strike. That yeah. is worth a victory point if it and dies. I did, and I did put shots into it. Like You did put shots into it. It actually almost died. Almost died, yeah. Um, it, 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 it gets lucky and lives, yeah. is what happens. 
And it's kind of important because that would have been a victory point for you, and I couldn't have scored one. Right. Because that, that's a two-point swing right there. So more back to what's actually going on, besides the fact that we're... Yeah, so the Akko group, group's going. Um, the Akko group's going. The Akko takes his next shot at the Jerboa, misses. who never dies. And misses. I think that's what this might be right now. It is. Yep, Jerboa lives. Jerboa lives on a seven. Um, Akko gets a six. Um, the Megadu went and... No, the Megadu finished... The, uh, yeah. the Amon finished off the Hussar. Yeah. Um, the Akkos are going to go and just sprinkle shots into the Fusilier, flailing around miserably. If I'd remembered the actions correctly, there would have been an ECM defense order right here to get the ECM defense up. So the fact that we forgot that I don't think matters a ton on my Well, end. I think we were operating under the assumption that it was just there. Well, that's the thing is, I, I, I knew the order went away at the end of the turn, but I thought if you turned it on, it didn't go off. Yeah. Um... Now, the thing is, like I said, there's a two-point miscalculation in my army that I could have gotten the extra command point on my leader, and I also forgot they got a third command point, not yeah. two. So I had effectively two free orders floating around that could have been for the ECM defense. Yeah. So the net effect I don't think is that dramatically important. I think it would have been there when they needed yeah. it. Yeah, but it would, it would have taken but a little bit more... There's a dice roll involved that they might fail. Yeah. Um, but either way, I mean, that's... That's it. Anyway, the Hussar died because finally. Yeah. Um, and it was it the, killed... Was I, it the Amon or not the Akko? I think the Amon killed it because the Akko still have tokens on them. Yeah. I think the Akko just try punking the Fusilier again and flip uh, it miserably. Um, cause I think the, yeah, here you go. Yeah. You're shoot it, there, there's, there's, the, there's the Fusilier getting shot at. Mm. Um, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> there's a six. The definition of insanity. By the way, the tank is agile, um, yeah. which is kind of important. But, like, the Hussar killed an Afek, it killed a Megadu, and it, I don't remember if it killed a Kadesh or not, but it put shots and damage into Kadeshes. Yeah. The Hussar did work. The Hussar did plenty of work, and it. the, the other important thing is it ate Amon shots. Yeah. The Railgun Amon spent every turn of the game that it was still breathing, firing into this yeah. um, Hussar. Yeah. So, while the Hussar, you know, there are some people who like to look at it and say, well, did you kill your points back? Yeah, I think that's kind of a point, a, a stupid argument. I almost said pointless for the pun, but you got to look at what did your opponent invest to kill it. Yeah, the single most powerful, most accurate gun in Dave's entire army spent all of its time shooting at the Hussar. Yeah, the Hussar still killed at least <laughs> most, if not all, of its points back. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't feel bad about this. No, no, no. even if it hadn't killed anything. I still wouldn't feel that bad because that effectively well, meant that the Amon never did anything. Just that that combat group alone, not just did, the Asar, did some heavy lifting. Did, uh, just it, it's a okay. It's a ridiculous combat group. Uh, you it, gotta it, admit, it, it's like, like a sixty point combat group. Yeah, it's like I got a Hussar and a really and a three action tank. and a three action heavy tank. <laughs> in a group together. And that's the entire squad. The tank is a command variant. But that's the thing. you got two models and five actions. That's that's just crazy. Yeah. Like, the the amount of work they can do... And, and, not and, only, and here's the thing. But the, Hussar, only, the Hussar's armor 10 with a piloting skill 4+. Plus. Yeah. The Voltiger's armor 11. Yeah. They're kind of hard to deal with. Well, and that's the thing. But the Hussar has so many weapons... Like that has the weapons, yeah, to use its actions effectively. Yeah, all of those models are they're they're very efficient. And the tank, also, ha I mean, they're like when you look at the when you look at some of the models on my side, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the Akos. They're per the weapons on them are pretty good. Like you said, you use the rocket pack, you react with the the mm -hmm. auto, auto cannon. But there's some of them that, um, so like an Amon. Right, whether it's the Buster variant or or the uh, the other Quasar. variant, the Quasar variant. Okay, yes, they have two of those big weapons and two actions. Mm -hmm. Once they use those two actions, okay, they're, they're done. They have React Plus, but if they use React but to you, fire one of those weapons. Right, it's less one, effective. Then the yeah. next time you go around, you have two actions. That you can use for one big gun that does something, and then a machine gun. Yeah. So, you know, but the Hussar has, has two, two actions. actions, but he has two, two relevant guns. Two relevant guns, and 
even if he were, even if he had a trait like React Plus, I do believe that he has another weapon that's better than a heavy machine gun. Right? Uh, no, it's a medium machine gun. Okay. Um, it, it actually, if it had React Plus, it would be almost worthless because and the like, tank what's the point? Has three actions and exactly and, three and useful exactly weapons. three useful weapons. Um, and that's a big thing when we, if you look, read, watch our our, our our model review videos, yeah, where I mention I look at a model and say how many weapons does this have and how many can it effectively use? Yeah, there are some models that we'll get to like um, the North has a model called a Mammoth. I hate that thing mechanically. Yeah. Because it's this weird amalgamation of long and short range weapons and not enough actions to use them. Yeah. And you're you're paying for potential, not output. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're looking at two very efficient armies on that front. Oh, yeah. Both of these armies are well, fantastically efficient on that front. They are. I mean, you get one action. Now, you do have a couple, uh, like the Bashans. I think, you know, if they react to something using a weapon, they really don't have anything to use their action on, except... You your ECM. But, yeah, they have electronic warfare actions that they can use that on. You also have um, a relevant melee capability, too. Yes. So you can, if you wanted to, bully chunks of the board. Yeah. And I think that's where, like, those offects... You're, you're saying the offects weren't in a great place. I just think they went there a little too early. I, yeah. If I, they played Kajir and done that this turn... You're yeah. now sitting on two objectives, um, actually three objectives because of the way the placement works. Right. And saying, okay, well, if you come into range of any of these objectives, you're going to get punched by Offex. Yeah. And that's not a pleasant experience for anybody. Well, not, yeah, that's the thing. Like, they, you, but you, you have to play to the strengths of, yeah. of your force. And that's, uh, I think that's kind of what was in my head was I'm going to go up. And do some bullying, mm -hmm. right? Like you said, like get up there and actually do some melee combat because they do yeah. have brawler plus. And I never made it there. Mm -hmm. Like once the firing started going, I just started firing back instead of pushing forward. Yeah. Right. If they had a buddy to ECM defense them, um, if they used cover on the way in, because I think turn one there, there's this. If you look at the shed. Like yeah. immediately to the top and right, there's this little building right there. Yeah. I think turn one, you very easily could have hid behind that. Yeah. With it, with it, with it, with a Bashan behind it for the bubble, yep. and then sat there for a turn, and then you can move out from there. Well, yeah, and I um, definitely learned a lot. It's crazy what you can learn in four turns of a game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tactical tip: if your goal is to run across the table, um, figure out how many turns it's going to take to get you there, and plot them accordingly. Yeah. If it takes three turns, take the most advantageous three turns to get there. Even if it means that you're not moving as far forward as possible every single turn. So many dice. Because I see some people do that, where they'll run screaming across the table top speed, like you did. Yeah. When not going top speed the first turn would have been better position overall. Yeah. It's, it's this really weird thing where sometimes the best answer to get across the table is to not go as fast as possible. Yeah. Well, and, and unless you have um, yeah, a, a low... Here, here, here unless goes, you have a low, the Akos. Yeah. And unless you have a low um, piloting skill... Um, make sure you're in cover. <laughs> yeah. Well, you want to be in cover anyway, but I'm saying the only time you really want to, that I would think to risk that movement is on the way in. It, on the way in is with something that's agile and low piloting mm -hmm. skill. You know what I mean? Like a, Yeah, I mean like the, you'll notice the Akos here, the Akos are, are like untouchable. Right out there, the yeah. Akos are untouchable. Yeah. For the most part, they are. they well, they're sitting within, like you said, three wrecks. Yeah, yeah. like I said, I, I think just, I killed two of them the entire game out of ten of the little yeah. things. Um, and they just keep lobbing rockets. And they keep lobbing rockets. And the thing is, I mean, you know, I they're lobbing rockets get, at Chasseurs. I, I think I can get another one from something. Another one of those guys uh, up there. You think you cripple one? No, you cripple some of the ones on the ground. Or you I kill a couple of them. I thought I killed one other one up there. I don't know. By the end we'll, of the game. we'll find out. But, this has been like. Um, like five days since we played this or four days since we played this yeah we played it Sunday but yeah that's a just it, sometimes it, it it's very easy to push models across the table um, a little oh, bit of planning can go a long way I think the Echo switch that. targets yeah th this was this is where the infantry came up where you remember yeah. there's an infantry hiding behind there yeah because you're like oh this guy this guy and you pick up the infantry model and you're like this guy or you point the infantry model and you're like okay now roll for this guy and you go wait a minute you can't actually hit you him can't because actually of hit how him the area effect you works you can't see him because He's, of how the area effect works yeah. so there's this little infantry and it's, a, and it's an ECM jammer team yeah like I have seven models with an ECM you have six yeah 
this is electronic warfare heaven, and we didn't even use it to its full capacity. I know. Like I, no, like I, I'm jamming your uh, on ECM, um, attacking your Amons. You could have been ECM attacking my Hassar and tank the whole time. Exactly, and there was also and with React Plus, that's not a loss for you. There was also one turn I think that I put up the first time I put up the bubble. There was some uh, like an ECM mm -hmm. bubble uh, on with the Bashans. It was a Bashan to catch an Amon. Well, one right. thing is, like, the Bashan that's on the corner with the guys, yeah. so we had a discussion about the bubble affects both sides. Yeah, it, it affects enemy models as but well. But it doesn't stack. So it doesn't putting stack. it up with that Bashan didn't affect yeah, the guy yeah, on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause because I wanted to put up the bubbles to protect the Akos. I think that's this turn. I think that's this turn. You but you were able to the shut them down after the fact that they were up. Was yeah, I, I, I jammed, the, I jammed yeah. them with Haywire and just say, no, thank you. Yeah. But, again, that's the trade-off, though, because now those models are jamming things, and I don't have the action economy you do. Yeah. You, you can shut this stuff off and still react with a, a respectable weapon. That's why I, th I think the Kadesh, particularly after this last update, mm -hmm. the baseline Kadesh is really good because it can shoot its heavy rotary cannon on its turn and then jam yeah. something on the follow on, on reaction. Or do the opposite. It yep. can attack something... And then the rotary can doesn't really lose anything, by I mean, yeah. it loses a die, but you're still at four. Yeah. I mean, Cap Caprice, there's so much flexibility here. Oh, I agree. Like I said, I, I think once there there are some some things that aren't represented. Like so, the the list was built out of what you had. When it's effectively I had. two and a half army boxes. Yeah. So without anything really, uh, and no Moab. Um, and I'll tell you right infantry. now, I, I think you would have gone a long way if you had one of the gun chips. Yeah. Um, because you could have been swinging around here and picking up that tank and yeah. things like that. Yeah, I definitely did get one. And I'm, I mean, eventually I'd like to have, you know, one of each, at least one, yeah. you know, the Moab. And I mean, Caprice is nice because it's not a huge faction. Mm -hmm. There's not a ton of stuff there. You need a Moab, you need a Hamath. Yeah, I mean, I think I printed out, like... You need infantry and, like, a Peregrine. I think you have the whole faction. I think I printed out, like, 60 cards, but... That's all That's variants. all the variations. That's all variants. Yeah. And infantry take up a lot of space. And I think that each, like, let's just say, like, the uh, Megadoo mm -hmm. has, like, what? Three variants. Is it three? So, some like, models four, only have, like... Yeah, I think it's like, like the Aqua only has three variants. Um, the now, that's another thing that I want to, to play around with, too, because I really thought about um, a Pyro Squad of Akos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with how durable they are, they could probably yeah. get there. Because um, you see how they stood up in that area. Uh, like, flame or Flaming is really good in this game, because a, a Flame is... You roll a D6, like, if you have the Fire trait, you roll a D6 on a 4 to take an extra point of damage. Yeah. Which um, actually did happen in this game. The Chevalier did firebomb somebody. Yeah. But, like, you can get a lot of damage through in that case well, without like, really doing much. If you had something, uh, so you have your five Akos, all, all Pyros, right? And then... Um, or four. I, I, I don't know what you... I don't know what I would bring in with it, right? Like, what I would put... I'd have to look at as the As a list. secondary... Um, you don't need a secondary. I mean, you don't have to have a to. secondary, but it. I don't know. I th I, I'd be curious to see if there's a group you could put a Bashan or a Kadesh in there mm. to ECM bubble them on the way in. That would be amazing. Um, well, but, I mean, you could do that. Four, but I like four four Akos and then um, secondary unit either a Bashan or a Kadesh. Yeah. Um, the Kadesh might be really cool because you could take one of the neutron Kadeshes with the the particle accelerator. Yeah. Hit somebody, okay, Haywire. you're shut down, yeah. flame to death. Dude, I just want to flame somebody to death in this game. Well, uh, because a lot of, I don't think a lot of people realize um, the smaller models have all those variants. Like, the the Akko is an Akko, but you have the option to do pyro variants, sniper variants, you know. Yeah, there's a pyro variant, there's a shotgun variant. And then a sniper variant, I think. There is a sniper variant. I can look at it. I know there is a sniper variant. So somewhere in the faction, I think there's a sniper variant. I don't think it's on the Akko, though. No, the Akko does have a sniper variant. I okay. know that for sure. Okay. Because I looked at it, and it was tempting, because you know how much I love sniper rifles. Yeah. But um, I, I built a kill team of, out of scout snipers. Yeah. 
you know, because that's... I mean, Aqua Pyros would be really cool. Scout snipers and rocket launchers is basically what it boils down to. Why not? Well, if I could get them, if I could get them before they got to me, it was over with. Yeah. But once they got to me, there wasn't much I could do. So a few notes here. Um, another Kadesh died. Yeah. Um, I think the Amon finally went down and Akka went down. Like I said, this is the turn where the uh, the Caprice really starts eating a lot of casualties, and it's it's like respectable scary casualties. Right. Because I think at this point there's there's one Kadesh left. Uh, yeah, so... There's... One Kadesh left, there's like four Akos. There's I think. four Akos, and then there's five Akos. And then these five... The Bashans are still up. The and, one Amon. And one Amon is still up. I think you destroyed the red one. Right? I think the red one's destroyed at this yeah, point. You wrecked the red one. So, uh, and this... The remaining Amon's about to get a lot of attention. <laughs> well, I don't think I'd kill it. Um, but there's a lot of stuff on that side of the table that doesn't really have another target. Yeah. Because what happened with this battle was there's three distinct fronts. There's the um, top front, which is around that big building with the gears on top. Yeah. There's the middle, which is between the bastion and the metal shed with the, uh, the X yeah. on it. And then there's one closer to the camera. Um, yeah, and that's another thing. Like, I think... And, and with, the, with the terrain, and particularly around this point where... You know, the target designator stuff is kind of starting to fall out. There's not a lot of great targets. The, right. the Amon, like, what does it shoot at? Um, it shoots at the Arbostrier. Yeah. Because he wants but the Arbus, that Yeah, but the Arbostrier magically lives. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm not sure how that happened. Um, I don't know I didn't either. expect it to. Uh, I mean, really, I think he was down to, like, one. He had one hit point left at yeah. the end of the game. It had one hit point. Yeah. And, but, once again, like, so much value in preparation in these games, and yeah. not only the pre, not only the preparation before you get there. I mean that is important. Like if you really want to play a game to the, to the best of your ability, mm -hmm. right? We're not talking about prizes and all that other stuff from a competitive tournament or whatever. We're just talking about you want to play the game the best you can, have the most fun you can, in my opinion, because every time you make a mistake. Right? You're just beating yourself up over, you know, oh crap. You know, I mean, you're not beating yourself, but you know what I mean? You're like, oh crap, if I'd have done this, it would have been a, you know, it could have been that. Uh, Shusser just died. Yeah. Regular Shusser just died. Oh, uh, was that your. Did I, did I kill your cat in behind the building? Um, so I think you killed the squad leader. Yeah. Um, I think you killed the Shusser squad leader. I think he exploded, like, off the table, but. <laughs> um, I'd have to, like I said, I don't know. Like, there was one behind the building that. Yeah, I think he's dead at this point. Um, that was guarding an objective. And I moved those two... Oh, there's the... Yeah, there's the Arbostrier just popped out. Those two Akos there that moved to get that capture point. Yeah. Um, now, the only issue with this pro with this plan is you're one turn too early. Yeah. Um, so the Arbostrier comes around. It's going to try and, fin and kill this Kadash. It's going to fail miserably. Um, it's then going to get lit up like a Christmas tree. By the Amon, I think. But, um, no, the Amon's out of actions. Yeah, they've already gone. But turn four, I think he, I think he just fires back at him. Y your turn four is literally the Akos and the Amon shoot the Arbolstrier. It lives on one, goes and grabs that red objective on the other yeah. side of the building, um, and then basically nothing else happens. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of flailing around, ineffective shots. Um, none of us. Um, I managed to get both my detailed scans off. Yeah, you did. Unlike the last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I scored seven points in the end out of a possible eight. Yeah. Um, and that was because there was one of my objectives, the one that the um, Bashan is up on yeah. top of the. But that's the one I didn't score. Because just to just to track the objectives here, I have scored the wipe them out. Because more than half yeah. the units gone, and it was a fire support group. Right. Um, detail scan is what happens this turn and next turn. It is, there, there's uh, there's a recon team and a couple of Draboas back there that scan some Akos. And I didn't know this. You can actually scan the Rex. For oh, that. can you? Yeah, you can scan the Rex for that. At least I'm fairly sure you can double check that. But I, I think you can scan the Rex. Um, I, I was trying to scan the living models, and there's one Akko right there. But yeah, um, I had to score. Uh, had to scan different models. So I couldn't scan him twice. Um, but the, there'll be two there for that, two off the wipe them out, and then the three hold objectives. Right. You're gonna get a hold objective. 
A capture objective. A capture objective. You're going to get two holds in a capture. Yeah. Because the middle objective but on the other side of that little X building is just mobbed <laughs> in models, and there's one little aqua there going, uh, guys, where'd you go? Well, I no, actually, I got... You got three. Well, the, the, the capture objective I got there. The, the, um, the one the one behind... The, that you can't see because it's behind the building with the X, that was my other capture objective. Okay. Then you don't get the one that the Mega did. And then on. I got the capture objective that was over there. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, up top. So you missed the one that the Mega Dude was on. No, I got it with the Bashan, but it was a, a hold. It was a hold. You only scored three points by our car right though. Yeah, I got well, I got two holds and one the, capture. Both captures. So it'd been four points. Yeah. Okay. Four points. I thought you had three for some reason. Because there was like you said, that Aco was right there. Yeah, but I thought he, he had friends. Oh, you know what? Because because the tank rolled I up don't, next to him. I don't think he got it because the tank rolled yeah. up next to him. Yeah, yeah. The tank and some other stuff roll up next to him. And said I think hi. you over you you took control of that objective at the last. Yeah, yeah. It's stu stuff swarmed it just specifically yeah. to cover it. So I got three. one of the cool things about New Cole is the baseline gear is movement nine. Yeah. Um, the Shuster is movement nine. The Mark II's are movement nine. Um, this army is like obnoxiously fast. So yeah, like I I can score an objective that's potentially twenty two inches away. Yeah, most definitely like. So a lot of the playing, and you saw it in our last battle report, where at the end of the turn, there's the zoom to go grab objectives, and it's stuff that is in weird <laughs> places pulling it off. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what I was saying earlier. So you, you're pre-planning, mm -hmm. right? So that's knowing your, your, knowing your force, what they're capable of, you know, those types of The studying beforehand, right? Do, do your homework. Right, do your homework beforehand. Now, if, if you want to improve your game, there's homework involved. Exactly. The, the, the other thing is, okay, once you get there, I mean, you can have an idea or you can even see the force list mm -hmm. uh, for the person if you have to decide to share them. But if you didn't or you're just not sure, I mean, reading a piece of paper is different than seeing things on the board sometimes. Some people, uh, some people are visual. But anyway, you get there, you look at what they have. Everything is public information. So take if you a, have questions, ask. Take a moment to look over their roster again while they're there and ask them questions, like you said. But, um, and then take into account all that information that you've gathered, right? Bef when it comes time to pick your objectives, what type they're going to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then all, uh, what type they're going to be, your placement of them. But then also when it comes to deployment, when you're deploying, you have to keep, take, keep in mind those things too. Because if you can, I don't know many games that, that are private with that, infor with that information. Right, and then there might be one Infinity. or two. Infinity. Infinity has private information. Well, it does have private information, but the roster is not private. I don't think. Oh yes, it is. Yes, it is private, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It's completely. Um, yeah, I, I, I've seen courtesy rosters in Infinity that have no models on them. There's some private information on that. There, there's some private. So you're like, right. in Infinity, your roster is private. Inf so there, there's public information. Your models. Your number of your, orders. Your is models. Your, your number of orders. Your models and your equipment. On all those models for public information, right? Unless the model has a hidden deployment, yeah. And your point costs are yeah. good, so there's like who's your lieutenant or something like that, because your opponent might put a model out and it might sure. not actually be that model. But do you have the opportunity to review that information, and unless you're in a hurry and you're just and you're just having a casual game or whatever, take the time to look it over, mm -hmm. and it, and it's a it's a good conversation. And do it after the fact too. Yeah. Like, you have no idea how much you learn by talk, like like what we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, just having this post game discussion, and even in the middle of the game too, like you can still ask those questions. Yeah, like, it, oh, that dude had a what again? Yeah. And what's the strength of that? Like, here's the general rule of thumb: your opponent is not obligated to remind you exactly. of optional things you can do. Yep. If it's mandatory and they don't remind you, they're cheating. Yes. Whether it's to your benefit or your disadvantage. Yes. If it's mandatory and somebody knowingly skips it, it's cheating. It doesn't matter which side. If it's optional, they're not obligated to remind you. Nope. If it's known information, then they provide it. They should. And yeah, they, they should. And um, like if you have a question, ask. But I can't tell you how many times I play games, and something happens, and says somebody says, "Well, I didn't know you could do that," and I'm like, "Well, why didn't you ask?" Yeah. Well, the other thing too was also getting at that is a very important point actually and, and, and with that just a quick tangent off that um, some people will say well I didn't know to ask and it's like that's fine but you start learning broad concepts like in War Machine do you have anything that lets you do anything out of activation 
do you have anything that increases your threat range? You start yeah. learning the questions to get that information now. Well, like, and this is the first. Okay, so I've played 40k. Mm -hmm. I have played Age of Sigmar. I've played. I have Infinity. I have an Infinity yeah. Army. Right? I mean, I have all these things. And in Infinity, I still like. It's just very complicated. Hopefully, very, N4 fixes it. Yeah. Very complicated, but I love the game. Uh, for one of the same reasons I love this game, too, I love the reaction options. Right? I really dislike, I move all of my stuff, now you move all of your stuff, you can do nothing while I move my stuff. You know, I hate those types of games. You, you go, know? I go. Yeah, you go, I go games are, you know, done. But... Also to remember that you can have a plan. If it starts to go terribly wrong, you can change said plan. You can change said plan. <laughs> um, if, if there's something critical that has to happen and you know it has to happen... And it does not happen. It's probably worth thinking about in army construction what you're going to do. You know, so, um, you know, it's just like that kid that in kindergarten that keeps trying to put the square peg in the round hole and he's like bound and determined to do it. At some point it doesn't it's work. It's just not good. And by the way, I think this is a recurring theme in all of our videos where Nick, at some point in time during the video, has to step in front of the camera. <laughs> you step in front of the camera on this one, too. <laughs> when I'm well, coming there's, back there's also part of it that's like... Well, we also have the issue of like there's models on the table. I'm I mean, just it's, it happens. I'm just messing with you. I was um, editing the last one and I'm like... What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, no, I, yeah. But anyway, but you you can't just if if it's there's some, if, 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 there if, comes if, a point where you can't do anything. If about you it. care about doing better at the game, you can't just do this ad lib. Right. You, well, you can't just do it on the spot and figure it on the spot. You have and to that put was some my planning, you have to put some thought exactly. In. And that was my point. Uh, this this is the first game that makes me look back and say, want what to could I have? be better. Yeah. Okay? Because because I feel like, like I said, I've said it a million times already. Uh, that's an exaggeration, but I've said it a million times already. Every game I've played this so far feels like I had an adventure when it's done. Yeah. Right? And I want that adventure to be even better. You know what I mean? Every time. I want to do cool stuff. Right? And I don't can't do the cool stuff if I don't know what cool stuff I can do. Right? And I, and I can't do the cool stuff I want to do if I don't know what my opponent's stuff can do. Yeah, right? you, you'll get caught off guard. But I want to, to do better in this game because I want to have better adventures. And that's what's different. Like, okay, my limited experience with War Machine, I have like two full armies right now that yeah. need to be done. Uh, one of them because I think that homicidal elves are great. Um, but <laughs> the other one... Because that's just what came in the starter box, and I really want to do this. Finish, we're going to finish out this War Machine series uh, eventually. Mm -hmm. But and, and you know, dead stuff is Rona. cool too. <laughs> dead stuff is cool undead too, necromancer right? pirates right. are kind of interesting. Yeah, right. Um, so I, I like that, but um, it hasn't given me, and, I, and I'm just getting into it, but it hasn't given me the sense of of what this game, what, what Heavy Gear Blitz, gives me, which is. I just, I just want to play it, right? It, 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 it'll happen. It, the, that, the first time you Pac-Man twenty guys and kill their caster, and but you that's get what that, I'm ooh, that was cool moment. That is cool, okay. But I don't have to wait for those moments with heavy gear blitz. It, right? it comes right off the bat. Everything yeah. is, you know what I mean. That, that, and I think part of it is to the discussions that we have about the other games that we played and how much different the game is. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about this because I think it's important for uh, people to understand. People who may just be tuning into the video or doing whatever, you know what I mean? Like to understand that, um, although we were rolling all the dice all the time when we're doing this thing right here. Just, just a quick note while you were doing this, just what happened. Um, Dave is shooting at this arbalist dryer, and it just um, it just skill pointed its reroll. Yeah, it, it rolled terrible, and then it rolled not terrible. Yeah. That's what kept it alive. Yeah, Jerboa around is doing some stuff. It's it's dodging my punches. It's dodging That's what punches. It's doing. It's dodging shots. Yeah, um, but yeah, sorry. That's okay. I, I just we're playing this game right now, and you're not hearing the audio from because like I said we wanted to play a game 
just to play the game. And we wanted to play a game and then let y'all see it, but we didn't want to have to look at the game. You know, not that we don't like it. We're going to go back to the doing things. Uh, and with occasionally doing one of these talking videos, but we're going to go back to doing the, this is what you can learn here, or showing you different yeah. things and all that. But we've done that for, mm -hmm. was it, three or four videos, and we wanted to play a game without having to pay attention to the camera. Yeah. Right? And then come back later and talk about it. But the whole time we're playing this game, okay, other than, ah, damn it, dice rolls, you know, I've, there's not a single we we're not getting angry at what's happening no you know because we're having fun with it the whole I mean pretty much the whole time it's funny watching like 12 models just sit there and yeah. watch rockets at each other and fail completely <laughs> to do anything about it but if I play there's there's always a time when I played Age of Sigmar there's always that point in the game where I'm just like, this is just stupid. It feels like work at some point. This is just... No, I've literally said that almost every game I've played. That's reasonable. What what happened? Oh, oh that's you just got stupid. The, no, you got the double turn. I just... You know, that's just stupid. Or I, I don't understand. You know what I mean? Like, like, how is that possible? How did I just unload... Where's the fun? How did I just unload, like, 20 dudes worth of ammunition kill your unit and then you snap your fingers and it all comes back again that's just stupid you yeah know? so there, there's a phenomenal video so there's a YouTube outfit called Extra Credits and they, they do a lot of stuff um, some of it's hot button issues but if you go back five or six years in their archives there's two videos that are fantastic for miniature gaming and it's a video game channel but fundamentally a miniatures game is nothing but a multiplayer video game no it's, physical pieces sure and they do two videos that I think are phenomenal. And the first one is the, um, what they call is, uh, I'm completely blanking at it, um, balancing for multiplayer, I think it's their balancing for multiplayer video where, um, no, it's Imperfect Balance is one where they talk about in a miniature game you actually don't want, in a game you don't actually want perfection. Right. You want there to be some slight inconsistencies to give people something to explore. But the other one is they talk about balancing for multiplayer, and they go into the idea that any multi any any multiplayer game, a mechanic must be fun not only for the player using it, but for the player it's being used against. Exactly. How is it meaningfully improving the game for both players? And that's my biggest. I, I have a lot. I know I say a lot. Like my biggest grief with that is my most fundamental problem with games workshops game design. Yeah. Is that they do not stop and consider: Is this fun to be on the receiving end of? And, and once again, is it fun to have your opponent hide a, a die behind their back, and you have to guess which hand it's in? <laughs> right. And if you lose, your model is removed from the table. Yeah, exactly. And where's the entertainment value? I like to point out that the majority of what we're talking about right here that aggravate us are all undead mechanics. But anyway, we, we <laughs> you're not wrong. Um, you're not wrong. But you know, like. It's, but it's stuff like that where it's like, really, what how, what does this add to the game by its presence? If I can do this, how has my opponent's life changed? And the sensor sharing we were talking about earlier in this video is a really yeah. good example. It actually makes the game more engaging because not that you have more options, but your opponent has things they can do because of it. And say, oh, you're still spending an action. Yeah. You're not forward observing. You're not guiding. It gives them options. Yeah. Um, and... I think that's the, the crux of, I, I think, good miniature game design, regardless of balance or anything like that, is, is the game fun on both ends? Exactly. Say, can well, you have fun losing a game? Is every mechanic and every step of the way fun and engaging? And I, again, like you mentioned with Games Workshop, is some of their stuff is really cool to use, yeah. and then it's used against you, and you're just looking at your army melt. Oh. And that's the thing. Like, and there are, there can be enjoyment found in even that. I mean, alcohol, that sol alcohol solves many problems. Well, okay, I'll give you an example. Okay, so before I do that, we're I'm explaining to, to the people. We're explaining to the people that showed up uh, how the game works and and so on and so forth. So there's like a little brief moment where we stop. Actually, this is right after, or is it right before or right after they told us they're going to be closing soon? Yeah, so the store, the store was actually closing on us. Um, the, the, the shop we played at was pretty cool, though. They're, they're, no, they're, they're great. They're great about that. Uh, they recently... It, it was more of a, like, hey, do you need to buy anything thing. Yeah. 
Do you need anything before um, we go? We're, we're about to round off. I think turn three might have finished already, but you know, uh, the, the game I, is pretty well in its end state at this point. Yeah, we got like 15 minutes left. Yeah, the, the game is pretty close to its end state at this point where... I, I think turn four was basically just... It is just that. Turn four is a little bit of movement. You took some pot shots to see if you can finish off a few things. Generally but, failed. And But we'll let it run through while I, I talk about this. So, okay. There are games that are frustrating to the point that I never want to play them. Mm-hmm. There are games to the point that are frustrating to the point that I only want to play them with certain people because that person likes the game. So, like... Age of Sigmar, I played uh, the last few games I've played of it was because Blaze, one of my buddies, really loves the game, right? Mm-hmm. So I whip out the models and we play, knowing that I'm not going to enjoy myself. Yeah, at that point, okay. though, you're, you're <clears throat> playing for the social experience. Right, exactly. You're not playing for the game. Now, I'm going to give you an example of a game that can be so frustrating, but for some unknown reason, I still want to play it every chance that I get. And that's Blood Bowl. <laughs> okay. Well, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's be fair. Blood Bowl is meant to be psychotic. I know. It's so good. Okay. It, it's meant to be crazy and have dumb things happen. And I will tell you. Yeah, exactly. But you, you, you have to go in knowing that and understanding that. And that's part of the game. You cannot take Blood Bowl seriously. No. But it, 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 but it can be frustrating. But Blood Bowl is a game of managing risks. Yeah. Right, that's it, all it, it is. It can be frustrating when nothing happens, but at the yeah. same time, you can be sitting there laughing you at You want to take your best options, your best strate- uh, uh, sorry, best uh, percentage options first, and then at the end, the crazy stuff happens when you start doing things that, well, if I turn, I over, if I turn over the ball, I turn over the ball. It doesn't matter at this yeah. point. The reason I bring it up is because um, we were talking about Experiences that people have had, and we have a few minutes here, and we're talking to those people. Um, but uh, Tristan worked for me at the shop, right? Mm-hmm. Loves Blood Bowl, and I do too. But he painted a number of teams and so on and so forth. So one day, I order him this uh, Minotaur. He didn't want to go try to get like a Minotaur thing from like GW or Forge World or whatever. So I order him like a you know Reaper miniature. It's like a Minotaur because. Mm-hmm. The chaos chosen, the minutes, yeah. get a minotaur. So he was waiting on it, right? Like, I ordered it on the Monday, you know, get a shipment on Wednesday. He's like, oh, yeah. Puts it together, paints it up in, like, lightning fast time, right? He's ready to get it on the field with his guys. He sets up the team. We're having, like, we had a league, so we're having our game or whatever. He sets up. One of the things you don't want to do in Blood Bowl is leave a guy on the sideline. <laughs> so, but he... For some reason, runs this Minotaur like right up and leaves it sitting on the sideline. This is we're talking like first turn, right? He just finishes his turn, and I'm playing dwarfs. And the first thing I do is make a beeline for that Minotaur, block it, break its armor, and kill it. Mm-hmm. Turn one, like he has barely <laughs> a chance. Yeah. Actually, I don't think he left it there. I think he tried to do something and got like the wild animal or you know one of the things, but he got stuck there, and I just wrecked that thing in like one turn, and he was so mad. I, I've encountered it a few times, but like Blood Bowl is a game I look at, and it's like you can't read the rule book for Blood Bowl. Oh yeah, it doesn't take itself seriously. No, it doesn't. And, uh, and that's the best. Like I, I, I'm probably fine with those games, and this is something that there's another video coming out where I talk about the difference between casual and competitive players and how you can help navigate this, you and your opponent have to be on the same page for what kind of game you want to play. Mm-hmm. If you want to play a casual game, your opponent needs to be aware you want to play a casual game. If you want to play right. a competitive game, you and your opponent both need to be aware that you want to play a competitive game. Because if you do not, that's where the problems happen. That's where the sparks fly. And that every time I've seen an issue where somebody's like... This win at all costs jerk ruined my game. Yeah. Or somebody's like, you didn't even remotely take this game in any effort seriously and you wasted my time is always a discrepancy. Yeah. And Blood Bowl to me is a game that it doesn't take itself seriously. So I'm not in t- I mean, like, I get it, some people can take it seriously, but well, you kinda gotta Yeah. I mean, is it I'm, I just gave it an example yeah. because it is a game that is that has some and I don't want to say completely severe, but there are some very, some big imbalances. But th- I think they're meant to be there for whatever it, it, reason. It's, but it's not meant to be a balanced gaming. But experience. 
I'm saying it, it, the the game itself and the playing of the game leads me more to like heavy gear blitz and the fact that I enjoy playing it mm-hmm. because uh, you also get that and, storytelling element. In this case, it's the crazy things that do happen. Yeah, you get frustrated with them. when a dice roll doesn't happen, right? Um, but it's a risk management game. Now, what I'm saying, uh, I brought that up to bring this up. I think in heavy gear blitz, and I. Please don't think David thinks it's the most perfect game on the planet. No, not really. No, no, no. Because nothing's perfect. Nothing's perfect. <laughs> but I think even in a situation like you're talking about where you must agree with what type of you know game you're playing, I think that the mechanics and everything are solid enough that even if you were playing in a more um, casual way and somebody was trying to, you know, really, really play, you know, competitively right Mm -hmm. at the same time I think some of that would even out strictly because you know there there are the mechanics are strong enough right that they can hold up one thing I like about Heavy Gear Blitz is everybody plays with the same rules yeah Um, there are no well okay I say there are no but for the most part there are no faction specific weapons mechanics or traits right anybody can have anything yep and it's kind of the same way, like, if you play Infinity without certain factions, it works that way. And it's very balanced. Like, Horus Heresy in 40K is a really good example. If you play just the Marines versus the Marines, it's a very balanced game. And it's mostly because you're working with the same core tools. They just look different in each faction. And, and that's that's fine, and that totally works. Um, I, I mean, I do give them credit. I think Heavy Gear Blitz, in terms of balance, is one of the better ones. Mm-hmm. Um, the factions that I have issues with, I have issues with that are not mechanical. Right. Like Eden, for example, has three models in their entry. Yeah. You cannot look at that faction and tell me it's as competitive as the rest. Sure. Is it because of a game design failure or is it more because of the faction's it. presentation? Yeah. Well, that was an issue DreamPod 9 had, I think. And, and, and maybe Eden is meant to be that to supplement in what I, I think they're going to get some new toys. There's no way you can do Space Knights. Because they're, they're feudal yeah, 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 yeah. and and not flesh it out. And that's another thing that led me to that that and sub list for Caprice, right? Is you, you could throw Eden in. Yeah. Um, but like they did it with Utopia with the last Kickstarter. Utopia was a very small model list and then they expanded it and I'm thinking Eden's probably next on that docket. Yeah. Because like I, I think what they came out with and I think it's something Dream Pod 9 hopefully has realized is that players like options for mm-hmm. the faction. If you come out with an army that, regardless of how cool the models are, if you don't have choices, if your faction only has three or five entries, yeah. no one cares. No. You're only going to get the diehards. And I, exactly. And I would like to point out what you just said, uh, too. I, I didn't acknowledge that, but uh, that's something that you said just hit me, too. Is, like you said, that if you know. You, what your uh, guys have as far as weapons and stuff, you mm-hmm. pretty much can... It's, yeah. it's going to be the same on the opposite side. Uh, I, I know it's kind of trailing behind because you no, said you're it. you're fine. No, you're fine. But, but yeah, that, that just now clicked in my head. Yes, everything, and there's nothing on the... You can't... You go, well, I have a Kaflutabu. There, there, there's you're no like, what the hell is that? My faction doesn't have a Kaflutabu. It's one of the things that drives me nuts about 40K is you watch it and there's like so many rules and weapons that are exactly identical. Yeah. But they have different names because different faction. Yeah. Um, one of the best one of the best discussions I got in with somebody about that was they're like, well, it gives my faction flavor. And my response was, if you're looking to the names of your rules and weapons for faction flavor, is that not an indication that the game designers have failed monumentally right. at their task? Yeah. That you're looking to the names of your stuff to identify your faction? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy, but I want to spend a. They didn't have a response to that one, by the way. I think I got right? thinking like, wait a minute. But I'd like to spend the last few minutes that we have, because um, so, at the end we're going to go with the normal. Yeah, we're, we're about to tie here. off the game. But um, um, I want to spend the last few minutes specifically on Heavy Gear Blitz. Maybe uh, I mean we're in like the last turn. I have like I yeah. Have... So so what's happening here is we're high speed in the last turn because the sword's about to close. Effectively, nothing is going to change. Yeah. Um, what's happening is I'm trying to contest that hold objective. The problem is I don't kill the Kadesh. So your hold objective, you get to keep it. Because that's what that Jerbo is doing. He's trying to contest right. it. I have two models that are contesting it, but you have three models that are controlling it. 
Um, I really, I try to put some rocket shots into the Aquas on the other side. I think I might actually kill one. I think you did. And then a Draboa comes around and detailed scans one. Yeah. Just to finish off the point. Um, and that pretty well rounds the game out. You, the Arbus Dryer, you can kind of see him popping out back behind yeah, the building. Again. <laughs> yeah. He shot back. He's hiding behind a wall on the other side yeah. of a building, looking at that Amon going, please don't do that again. Um, the Amon actually, I don't think, gets a shot off this turn. He doesn't really have a target. I don't know that he does. Um, it, it's more of a lack of targeting thing. It's one of the downsides with all his terrain is um, with what he's been left and how fast my army What's is. What's a downside and a positive sometimes, too? Mm -hmm. Well, with how fast my army is, I can just say, nope. Yeah. Nope out of here. And um, there's no, like, disengage mechanic or anything that, that, that holds you. There's no attack of opportunity or any yeah. of those things. It's like I walked out of your <clears throat> sight. I'm sorry. Um, uh, but I wanted to spend the last couple of minutes <clears throat> talking about a couple of things here. Okay? Just real quick. And then we're going to have to go through the see us on Facebook, you know, the social media stuff, yeah. whatever. But, the one thing I want, <clears throat> we're talking about game mechanics and how solid they are and so on and so forth, and then having gear blitz. And we've mm -hmm. talked about a lot of other games, but I want to talk about this now, strictly this. But the one thing that gets me about, not just heavy gear blitz as a game, but Dream Pod 9 as a game with a developer or producer, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, the game company, yeah, is that I see how much work they put in to this game, not just mentally and putting it down on paper and communicating with the community and getting it, you know, the new rules and stuff, but like, okay, today we're going to pull out these old molds that we've had or whatever, and we're going <laughs> to make a bunch of these dudes. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about, I'm just going to go and like call China and be like, hey, I need you to ship me like, you know, so many of these and so many of those. Like, there, there's a really cool video of their office. Yeah, and it's like. A townhouse size, yeah. like it's maybe two thousand square feet, and they're like, "Yep, yeah, the office is up here, and it's one, it's one desk, and, yeah. and a couple computers, and then there's our casting area down the stairs." And congratulations, you've seen the entire office. Yeah, well, like you go in there, and the, the cool casting stuff that they have for like the metal it's engine it's stuff. All spin cast. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat the way that they. I they got another this. video coming out where I talk about people wanting every model to be plastic and why that's a terrible, a terrible idea, idea and it actually yeah. doesn't work. Like I said, I like I like the fact that there that this isn't a deal. Yeah, there's a lot of like GW, for it's not for a instance. GW is not, GW wants some more some more models. What do they do? Pick up phone. They don't have their own production facilities, right? Uh, or do they? I don't. I don't think they have like mass production facilities. They don't. I don't think they have the production. Yeah, they're not just that. They don't have a production facility. They have an assembly facility. Yes. Because, like, their stuff is made in China, but it's packaged in the U.S. Yes, exactly. Well, it's basically, they have the sprues there, yeah, and, they just and then they just together. box it. And sometimes they box it when you order it, right? They have, like, a stack of sprues, yeah. and that's why occasionally you get a piece that's, like, off the sprue. Um, but, yeah, so pick up the phone and call somewhere, well, no matter where it is, China, Taiwan, Singapore, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then you... And then you, you know, get the models to come in on a ship somewhere or whatever when these guys literally go, right? And even the plastic stuff they're doing, they had the mold made, the molds that they may have in somewhere overseas or whatever, but I don't know. Uh, the molds are made in China. Yeah. That's mostly because your choices are do you want to go to China or Germany for. Exactly. So you get a mold made. Production. And then you get that mold sent back here. And you don't like call them when you need stuff. You go to another North American company or another Canadian company and you have them make these plastic models for you, right? And they have videos of it on their website, you know, on their Facebook and stuff, where they show, you know, this is the first, you know, molding of this, you know, model or whatever in plastic. But that's one thing I respect about them, that's why I wanted to mention it, is that they work, they work hard to put this game out, right? It is, and you don't work that hard on something unless you have a passion for it. Yeah. Especially when you're not the size of a company like GW. Yeah, right? sometimes I get the impression from GW that they don't actually care about their product in the sense that we have passion for the thing we're making. Right. They have passion for the money it makes. Well, yeah, and that... But, and but, I can't blame them for that, but you can tell it. Um, there, there's a, a YouTube channel I watch occasionally, and he goes through and talks about models, and 
he does a bit where he, he'll look at a model and it's like, okay, this is a lazy, sloppy design. Yeah. There's a wonderful video pointing out where they literally put the guns upside down on a model yeah. and it made it to production. Yeah. Well, that he, model is in production. By the way, it's the uh, Space Wolf upgrade pack from Forge World. The pistols are upside down. The sights are on the bottom of the gun. No. And it's like, oh, oh, you didn't care. Exactly. Uh, and when you take out that a lot of the work that you don't have to do yourself, this is what happens. Yeah, you get stuff like that. But I, I can go on and talk about this game and these and the company that makes it forever. But we've talked for like We're three out of time. hours. We're out of time, guys. So. <laughs> and so, but I wanted to say real quick in the last few seconds that we have, go ahead and visit us at our, our new website. That's something new. Uh, WhatGameNow.com. That'll have all our social links on it. Uh, we also have a new Discord server, which is also listed on there. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And keep asking the question, what game now?